Welcome to everybody. Nice to see everybody here. Um, let's see. Public comment. Anybody got your name? Wendy Burroughs. Hi. Hi. You're Mr. Shackett? I am. Yes, we spoke on the phone. So my com my um my public comment uh, concerns uh, the town right of way. So um before Memorial Day, you couldn't get through my driveway unless you had an SUV. And I know this because I watched my 86-year-old mother struggle and bottom out in her car trying to get out of the driveway. So I called on a Friday and I spoke with the town administrator who informed me it was not his job to deal with these questions. Um, he told me he was aware for the last five years that there has been a problem with the erosion down uh, Depot Street, um, but that I should call and let people know that it rained so that they would know that the road has eroded again and I can't get through my driveway. And he told me that nobody was working on Friday because the highway boys all have Fridays off. And I said, well, why do all the highway boys have Fridays off? And he said, because it's more efficient that way, because it takes an hour to set up a job, an hour to take down a job. And so they work 10 hour days instead of working five days a week, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. So um, he took my number, said he'd look into it and get back to me. But again, had been aware of the problem for five years. And this wasn't the first time that I had called. So um, I gave him my number and I never heard back from him. Instead, I called the chairman of the board who is not paid except for some small per diem, right? To be, to be the board chair, yeah. who was trying to get a haircut um, before the <laughs> holiday weekend. <laughs> and instead of paid employees from the town of Hyde Park dealing with my issue, I had to have the, the chair get involved, who promised me he couldn't do anything either because he was going away for Memorial Day weekend. But he promised me that it would be taken care of uh, by the end of the week. Um, and as I was telling my sister this story, she said, now remember the end of the week is Thursday because the highway boys don't work on Friday. So I'm sorry, but I think it's absolute bullshit that, <laughs> that they get to work four days a week and that there is nobody there, no town person who is there and available to help me. And quite frankly, I think they stuck it to me by waiting until Thursday to come and fill in the <laughs> the cavern that was my driveway. And I'm sick of it. I, I don't understand why I have to spend my time and come here or to call when it rains to let you know that there's a problem with my driveway, especially when I'm told by the town administrator, who again says it's not his job to deal with that stuff, that, um, that you've known about it for five years. So I, I really am looking for a few things. One, why is it that the highway boys can't put in a full full week? I mean, normally when you have people working four 10 hour shifts, you have some people working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and you have the rest of them working Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I don't believe this business about it takes an hour to set up a job and an hour to take down a job because when the guy finally came, it took him approximately 30 minutes to do it. He was by himself. There was nothing set up. So I, I think that as town employees, somebody should be on the job. Now I looked on the website and it said call the sheriff if the highway department is not working. What do you think the highway, what do you think the sheriff's going to tell me? They're going to tell me not my job either. I can't come fill in your driveway. But I just, I, I think it's ridiculous that we don't have people working full time during business hours. And also, I, I really do firmly believe that they stuck it to me by waiting. I'd like to know what those other more important jobs were on Tuesday, Wednesday, and then finally coming on Thursday. What, what's this big job that they had to do? <clears throat> I think it's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they were, they were doing on uh, 
Tuesday and Wednesday of, of that week, but uh, um, let's reiterate what our conversation was about. And um, uh, you called me on a Friday? Yes, and before was, Memorial Day. And it was after I got done work, so 3.30, quarter to four, somewhere in there, while well, I wait for my haircut, and then... After I'd spoken with the town administrator who said he, it wasn't his job, but he'd get back to me. And you spoke to him at what time? In the morning. On Friday? Yes. Okay. And when did it rain and wash out your driveway? I don't even know. Sometime a few days before. But I, I don't think that I should have to call the highway department and say it rained and the driveway's washed out again when you knew it for five years. I don't think that's reasonable. I didn't know it for five years. Uh, <coughs> that's what Ron, you told me. If Ron said he, he was aware of it. At but, least five years. Yeah, but I was never made aware of it. But uh, uh, it was unfortunate that uh, um, you had to go through the web in a sense to get to me and then to have something to be um, uh, to get done about it. And so uh, we are working on a, a water mitigation program to try to tame all the water throughout the, the village. and. Uh, in the town and how it flows and we've been working on that for over a year now uh trying to figure out all the different channels and stuff like that and you're welcome to go back in and see any of the videos on those things uh, um that we are working on it trying to figure out and it's cost money uh, a lot of money to uh to try to figure all that out and we have to have engineers and uh, you know, people come in to uh, uh, figure out all this uh, water and where it goes in there. And things are constantly changing too. People are building and stuff are being torn down and stuff like that. That all impacts and stuff like that. Right of ways, we're working on, uh, uh, we're going to start working on right of ways because we're talking about places for this water to go and all these places people own. So we have to get right of ways from each one of those. Uh, um, participants that want to do or don't want to work into it and that's what we're working on currently with it to try to mitigate the water so that is something something has been going on and, and just unfortunately it uh, uh, hasn't moved at a speed that uh, uh, makes it so that uh, your driveway doesn't wash out but it is in the work and I understand that but I don't understand the response that I got <coughs> that it's no one's job to deal with that and that I you know should, should have called sooner um, to let people know it was raining. Does well, it wash out each time? Or no, just so no. how is everyone supposed to know when it does erode if you don't? And call? you've known for five years there's a problem on the road, and if somebody bothered to come take a look, you would see that there are these deep crevices along the road down Depot Street. Who, who is in charge of the highway department? <coughs> I guess it'd be Mark uh, French. Well, again, I looked on the website. I noticed there's stuff from 2017, 2019, 2021. There's nothing current there for 2022. For what? For somebody in The charge. highway department, if you click on the tab. Oh. There's no names? There's call the, the highway department. Yes, there are names. Oh, okay. But I'm saying there. I don't know what what um, videos you're talking about. They're no. they're not there on that particular page. No. It's it's stuff from 2021 and before. It's uh, this meeting is recorded, and that's what I was referring to. Was it uh, uh, any discussions that we've been if you going? if you go right to the town website and you go to contact us. The tenth one down, highway department. I did. There's a phone number. Yeah, I saw that. But again, nobody's nobody's working on Fridays. Did you call? Did I call? Yeah, did you call the highway department? After I spoke to the town administrator? Mm -hmm. No, he told me nobody was working on Friday. And they wouldn't be right. back until Monday. I mean, they wouldn't be back until, until Tuesday, Tuesday right, because right. Monday was all so It was a long weekend. Yeah. yeah. I was just saying that. I was just curious if, they, if they've if they left a message. So if you, you know, because things happen in the middle of the night, too, and someone might call, try to call the highway department. So if they'd left a message that referred you any place. I was just curious. It, it does. It refers you to the sheriff's department. Okay. <clears throat> So currently it's fixed. The, they came and fixed it, and is it, is it to your satisfaction? I, I'm 
not picky. I just want to be able to go across my driveway without bottoming out or again, have my 86 year old mother bottom out when she comes to visit me. It, it is the town's right of way. And, you know, for years I planted grass there to help with the erosion problem. But, you know, after 20 years, it's like, forget that. Every year, you, you know what it is on Vermont roads, you end up with all the winter stuff there. And, uh, and it's like, forget it. I'm not gonna keep buying grass seed to, to plant there. No. So, in the future, I guess I'll talk with, I will talk with Mark and ask him when he's going through that area to try to keep an eye on it. My suggestion is don't, don't expect Mark to do it though. If it does rain and it does wash out, I, I would still suggest a phone call. I mean. Okay. Yeah. That's my suggestion. I mean, I'll, wow. I'll do it. I, I more was trying to get across that the response I got was really not satisfactory. I, I'm not a real high maintenance person. Like I said, 20 years, this is the first time you've seen me here complaining about something, but I thought the response that I got was just absolutely ridiculous. That's something we can take care of in a conversation. Other than from you. Say, well, thank you. Well, no, you, you <laughs> I was said, starting to feel. <laughs> no, you said you'd get back to me. You uh, you said somebody would fix it by the end of the week, and they did on on Thursday. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I'm sorry it had that it happened, but uh, um, we'll do what we can. I don't, we know I, I, I don't know if I'd apologize exactly because the situation of the highway crew having a four day schedule and being off for a long weekend we had to make a call you know, between me and the highway crew about overtime call for a driveway that you wanted repaired but she also said she could get in and out but she went to one side of a deeper area and there's probably is that an overtime call is every call that we get an overtime call because somebody's called regardless if it's their first time or their 20th so it's a kind of a judgment call during that call about how do you respond to it we there was nothing saying that she was isolated or, or right. cut off from exactly. the public road system. It was an emergency. Yeah, so if there's an emergency or, or something else, the something else usually waits for the next week. So we sent a couple of emails to the highway crew, said, if you guys are out Saturday, because it was potential heavy rain, please stop by and check this out because it might get worse, that, that kind of maintenance. And then somebody sent some pictures, I think you did. I sent I those. Forward them on the but you couldn't see from the pictures. No, right. I explained that in the in the no, that's, and that's what I said to the highway. I said these pictures don't really help. Pictures don't actually help at all, in most cases. But you might want to see this is what's what is going on, and then they got to it the next week. So that's kind of a normal response. And I don't. If you guys want to say who's going to make the call to go out on overtime, that's really between highway and, and Mark and the persons. Uh, safety on what was right. not an emergency. Or you could have been working on a Friday and then it wouldn't be an overtime call. That's been debated for 10 years and it always comes back to four tens in the summer. We've had, that, know, we've had that conversation numerous times with very different boards. This is the same crew that plows your roads and sometimes works seven days a week and Christmas Day and Thanksgiving Day. And this is time with their family on holidays. So I think giving them Fridays off in the summer is a very is an okay thing. If there's an emergency or something that has to get done in the town, then they work on a Friday. But you need to look at the whole picture of their whole schedule. And, and the crew isn't large enough to split up into the kind of days right. you're talking about. If we were the size of Morristown, you might be able to consider right. that. But with basically a three, a four person crew, you can't, you can't split up that way. It doesn't work. So. And they work seven days a week, a lot of times in the wintertime. So it's kind of our, a, our neighboring towns do the same schedule as well. I know Eden does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Johnson does it. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of a, and I feel a we're, balance. I feel we're truly blessed to have to find people to be able to do the work they do is almost impossible. But going forward, I think that we can communicate and make sure that if something like this happens, like it, it rains and it does wash out. Just a simple that first day notification, you know, obviously the Friday is unfortunate, but we can do better if we know before Thursday or whatever. So we can communicate 
We did. We did talk to, to your point specifically a couple of years ago. We talked about a hotshot crew of sorts, which were um, people on our staff, which were on call, that were like retired road foreman rolling like people <laughs> that still like to respond to people that they would just jump in their car, go meet with the person, check it out, get paid 15, 20 bucks an hour, whatever. And then that would be resolved because they'd get immediate service and have access to the highway crew equipment if they needed it versus calling the whole crew out at their right. elevated wages yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. We don't have that person. So it falls to the chair of the board or me or any of the board members to take that first call and decide what to do. And it happens all the time, all over town. And sometimes it's enough to justify the, the on-call team, if you will, that goes out and, and has access to all the highway crew and they're trained, trained on the equipment. Yeah. We haven't done that yet. So the call of overtime or defer is what we do right now. So it's a learning lesson. And uh, um, so you feel free to give me a call. You know, I'm pretty busy, but um, then give me a call and then uh, if uh, none of the other avenues work for you. I, I appreciate that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Um, any other public comment? Am I public right. comment or am I You're on, on the agenda? You're on next. You're on next. Okay. Yep. How would anybody else come to public? I don't know what's that. Go ahead. Okay. Well, you all, you've all had the opportunity to read my concern. <clears throat> and um, I don't know if you've been down Eaton Street. And it's not all because of this last paving. But you are paving so high. Now, we have to climb out of our yard. And when they paved this time, Except they put a big dip there. <clears throat> and apparently, apparently our employees weren't aware that we had a three to four foot apron off the edge of the highway into our driveway because of the slope. Well, now you put this high Park made mess and you call it stay mat. It's not stay mat. I don't care what you call it. It's dirt with ground up rock in it because it tracks everywhere. I step in it, my feet sink. It is a mess and I don't like it. I want that stay mat that we have in our driveway. The driveway is that black gray stain net. You can get it at Menage, you can get it at Grimes, I don't know where else, but it's all around. And that stuff is not stain net. It's already washing and it tracks terrible. When you drive out of our yard, it's like tracking and you've been tracking through the dirt. In uh, one of my free moments I had, I drove by and yes. I did look at your, your plate. I agree. Yeah, okay. I agree with you. So I have two choices. Uh, two two requests. Either remove it. Put the apron and some stay mat, or we'll do it in charge of you. It's that's the way I feel. Me too. <laughs> Maybe okay. that worked for me as well. Oh, say, we'll say, one of them's going up, and the others is a ditch. If we put together, they were okay. We'll get the head We've got piles and piles of bills, so we'll just add it to the pile. <laughs> okay, so that's. So um, I am going to make a note and talk to Mark. Well, Mark told me his hands were tied because the business manager told him he had to do that. I will talk to both of them. Okay. And then uh, we'll get it uh, rectified. Do you want to get this, the top side of the room? Oh, well, wow. Yes. And you put that stuff all along in front of, I understand not wanting to break the edge of the the asphalt, I understand that. But usually we have topsoil that we can jump. You get that jump, that stuff, and I step in it, you look at my footprints right in it. It's just not good. Yeah. And any other thing, I, a, a friend of mine works for an apartment, and is the no, truth to the rumor that I, I got that you getting a lot of not the way it was. No, I'm having a hard time here. Thank you. Having else, somebody that I know works with the department. It's a small community, you know. And they're bringing knotweed in with this. And we have knotweed down by our, on our property. And it's awful. It is. It's just terrible. So I don't know if there's any truth to that rumor, but if there's truth to that rumor, that's not good. Spread knotweed. We don't need any more knotweed. No. 
Well, we have a team trying to get rid of the not. Oh, we've tried and tried. Good <laughs> yeah. luck. Yeah. Well, no, the woman doing it. Have you talked to her? She's oh, really yeah, great. I came and dug it all yeah. up and came back better than ever next year. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I go, I go, yeah, go for it. What, was this last year? No, cut me a hell of a moment. That was about a few years ago. Oh, yeah. so no, it's no, not no, this. This is a new lady. No, but it's she, not the same lady. I was yeah, going to say, going, this she's is. She's actually a, doing a really good job. Yeah. This is a good job. How many years has it worked? Is that an iPark? Yeah, sort of. Yeah. How many years ago did she? She just started. She just started, she just started last, last year. year. Yeah. 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 Okay. And okay. the places well. that she's done are superb. Yeah. Well, I, and it's, 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 yeah, yeah, so you know, they came yeah. to do it because there was some medicinal purpose for this. And they came and dug it up for the medicinal purpose. The root has some. They should be so lucky. Yeah. 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 When you burn it, it smells yeah. like pot. So, so <laughs> Brian, I can give a little more information. <laughs> well, yeah, go ahead. So the, the, the specific request from Beth is similar to Wendy in a certain regard, where the highway crew has their standard process for whatever they're doing. So when that standard process comes up against a modified or homegrown need, type of material used, paved, unpaved, all those things, and a history of a water project that probably took out the original apron and didn't put it, and didn't put it back. So that is a separate issue. Who really has the the so responsibility here. Right. So it could be Manash actually forgot to put your thing they took out back as part of the water project. And the highway crew just did their normal application of paving and, and short aprons, which creates the more severe elevation change here. So that's the first issue. The second issue is the material type. They have basically two types that they make themselves. They have the looser cut gravel mix, and then they have a finer gravel mix. And the gravel, the finer one is our material that they'll use for compaction and sometimes they use if there's a paving project they'll actually create a whole bunch of um, grindings which is a asphalt mix which really packs well and then that will be a third type of material the other materials whether they're your property or somebody else's in town has to be it's more like a town-wide policy so we have those three choices if we have the grindings pile we don't necessarily have the fourth and fifth and sixth choice by people that want specific types and we generally don't do topsoil. That's a natural thing. Like in two or three years, the grass creeps back up to the pavement edge, and then you can mow it again. It won't happen for two or three or four years. Not with that stuff. It's all stone. It's all rock. No, it'll, it, it happens. Yeah, it, it'll it'll happen over time. In the meantime, my lawnmower gets beaten up. Yeah. No, I'm just saying that's what happens generally is that that, that okay. gravel's still there, but the grass creeps right But we were told that they would restore and, and we we didn't complain about any of the dust in it because i know projects take a lot of, it's it's a mess during the construction it's yeah. it's always a mess and if they're going to dig up next year for sewer it's going to be great all over again i can hardly wait but anyway <laughs> this oh, this God. stuff that is made here in hyde park is not what we had on our driveway Understood. Yeah. and we were told it would be returned to the way it was prior mm -hmm. until you guys came put that junk in yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, gotcha. It's gotta go. But, but let me just, the underlying issue is that Manash, who did the project, or su is supposed to be who has returned things to normal, mm -hmm. and then our town crew was just coming in and doing a little touch up. They weren't. Well, and the again, town all paved of that. the road and put that thing in, Susan. The, yeah. The, and, they, and they usually do a little apron. They did a little thing for my mailbox, but you, you fall off that and you break your neck. Yeah. And, and, and it's not two inches, it's more like six on that ramp once you take that dirt away. So they really cut corners. The paving company yeah. you had cut corners. Yeah, I think but if Manash had put back your forefoot, then the highway guys would have come over and put another two inches on top of that road or whatever, and it probably would have been a lot better. But they yeah. weren't ready to do a six inch lift. And they well, they had changed, they changed engineers, Dufresne and Henry. They had one one year and then they had yeah. another guy yeah. and one guy didn't know what the other guy did and they didn't put enough topsoil on our And you were promised our, no yeah. harm. And so yeah. we're going to pay for our own topsoil because yeah. we're fed up with this foolishness that we have to deal with all the time. So what was it prior? Was it pavement prior? Or? Uh, uh, apron. It was an apron. Apron. Pavement. Uh, uh, two. Because we have pump sewer up so we kept we keep it with stay matches we we love to asphalt it but if something happens we have to dig that off it's not worth it mm -hmm. so that's why we have the stay map not the stuff that but yes the apron was a pavement 
Yeah, of course, asphalt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it so came that's, down that's the probably part. four feet. And now, as it is with the material that's there in the winter time, when I plow, I will dig it up and I'll damage the the actual road. I'm to get into the road edge. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No question. Yeah. It's a rain. <laughs> My guy is the second guy now. I didn't have a second guy. <laughs> In the pavement, you don't want the pavement back, or, or we do. Yeah, you do. You do. I, ideally, we'd like it back the way it was, which is a pavement apron. There was a aerial photo taken right after the Manash left the water main project, and the house south of yours, I think, or no, north, the, yeah. had a paved ramp put back in by Manash. No, uh, no, the town did that. No, he was doing the pavement patches. It was done. What the aerial photo looks like is that all the new cross cuts for the water mains were in the road and there was a brand new paved patch under She paid for that. She didn't, the, the patch or the whole driveway? Just the, the apron. The, the three or four foot apron is yeah, totally black. Yeah, did that, but, but then but they paid out their own money. Hutchins came along. Yeah. Hutch, because she complained to Mark. Oh. She told me that Hutchins came and yeah. gave her the ramp. She doesn't like it. But we, I told her she needs to extend the driveway another 10 feet so she can get a head start and get out. <laughs> She's not old enough to become an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you make him go away, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this is what I would okay. like to have an apron back and then the real gray statement, not that brown statement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, would you be happy with uh, like crushed uh, pavement? Well, I'm not confused. Yeah, there's a, there's a, I put it in my driveway and it packed down really hard. Does Under it look like the gray stay matter or that brown stuff? It's black, black, black pavement. It's what? It's, it's black. black. Where did you get your other stuff? You know? It's probably Grimes or Menos. Yeah, it yeah. It's it was, blue. Yeah, yeah, it's it's from the dairy quarry, I think. Is where they get it. Oh, the games. Yeah, I think I think it was. I bet. Do you remember? I don't. Well, you're supposed to know. Something. I don't know that. <laughs> where do they get this stuff? I don't know, but it's just the dark <laughs> stuff. If it will pack down well, it will be like the driveway, and it'll blend in. That'd be fine. Fresh asphalt. Would you be able to put like a half load in your truck every night and bring it home with you? And just <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything? Now, come on, I've been going above out. and beyond. Anything. <laughs> Anything. Can you fix Wendy's too? Anything. <laughs> Do you have a dump on it? Yep. Yeah. We'll pull one on it. Yeah. We'll pull one on it. He's going to shovel it. <laughs> Is it going to be packed or are you just going to have to keep driving? Where I'll loan roll in my hand camper. Okay. And he can, he can it's the hot shot crew I talked about. That's <laughs> it. There we go. Sometimes you just have to the gate. But you make yeah. more than 750 a year that way. That's right. 675. <laughs> yeah, right. Sign on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to get, okay, you can do that out of this year. And let's see. What May the, the 14th. Yeah. By this time next week, if it hasn't happened, please call me. I'm in the. On Friday. Call you on Friday. No, call oh. me on, uh, on Tuesday <laughs> next week. Okay. Are you, are you saying. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise I'll screen your phone. Wait, wait, no. wait. <laughs> Brian. You, you're saying. The ramp, the blacktop ramp by next week is going to be put on there? Or the stay mat. I'm glad he Or agreed. the stay mat. Yeah. No, I'm because glad. I'm telling you, you ain't going to get nobody blacktop back with no. no, Not blacktop, no, but, uh, well, but the, the stay mat. The blacktop first. The stay mat. Well, you're going to have to, <coughs> and we're going to dig that brown stuff up. Maybe, maybe Brooke can do that. He's not, he's not, not far away. For he's, not, he's not far away. I know. But and I know he's going to shovel us brand new, never been it? used. Could be $1,000 for a paved four foot ramp. Just let you know. Yeah. Well, at this, at this point, there's no sense of trying to figure out whose problem it is. It's our mm -hmm. problem because we were supposed to put it back the way it was. So I would say at this point, just go ahead and get it done. Appreciate it. Thank hmm. you. That's just my opinion. Okay. There's four so, other people. That's so they can dig it up next year. The sewer make system, right? get, get what yeah, done? Think Add so. grindings, or you're going to talk to Mark? Don't talk to Mark. What grindings are yeah. materially have? Oh, pavement first. Pavement's the optional. That that's the optimum stuff because that's going to be the nicest stuff when it comes to plowing and dealing with maintaining maintaining that in the winter. 
Yeah. So I would love to do the slow. You, guys, you, might, you might be able to talk to Kevin Schleich and get it done quick. Uh, and I'm not saying it has to be done in the next week. Yeah. But Brian, <laughs> um, <laughs> call me in a week. I said, said. No, no. So now he has to go. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're looking at you know. We're reasonable <laughs> and, and before you know, snowflies. Before snowflies, you know, before it gets cold, you know, we should be able to be in, which is like yeah. forty. Yeah, we get it, but as long as it gets done, we don't. So, so if Melange dug it up and Melange is there to put it back, why are we putting this angry? Why is it because it's, it, it is the Melange dug it up and Melange the town put has it back the way it was. They didn't put it down anymore. Right? Right. The town taxpayers paid for it. Because at this point, there's no sense of arguing and pointing about it. We just won't get it done because it's our problem. Yeah. What do you mean? That's the reason for it. If that's the case, I got a complaint. Well, <laughs> hey, if you want to bill for my door yard that cost me to do my I door yard? I was going to say. I can tell you how much it took me to fix my door yard. You might not want to do. <laughs> I'm just saying. They're all going to go to the board. I can tell you that because it's so, right. so case by case. We'll have yeah, we'll have the whole town in here. Only the village. No, no, Senator, I'm not the village. I'm on center road. I'm on center road. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, the, the apron. What's your apron? Yeah, the, the steam that you're talking about, and I have a brand new driveway that's steam and I just redid it. So. So, where are we now? I'm going to talk to Myra. Okay. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Um, what's, what's your number? It's 802 2811. Okay. Then we'll move forward. Okay. Are you, anything else? No. Yeah. Nope, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Bye. And I guess we're on the memory. You know, Wendy's right over there. Hi, Wendy. Uh, bring your chair over. If you speak closer to the mic, it'd be better for the audio recording. Yeah. There's your copies. Good evening, everybody. Hi. You're Brian. Yeah. You're Chastity. Yes. Thank you. I know Susan. Hi, ma'am. Roland, right? Thank you. Yes. And Matt. Thank you. I'm Wendy. And here is the PowerPoint. We'll follow up today. Great. Thank you. You got one. Yep. Yes. I do. I'm going to put it up on the screen if I can figure that out. I'm Wendy Wilton. I work for Nemerick. Currently, um, I also uh, do your payroll under a contract with Nemerick. So I knew a little bit about the finances of the town. And um, uh, Ron asked me to take a look at the uh, at the accounting side, not just payroll, and take a look at you know how it looks, uh, the status of it. I know you're getting ready for an audit for fiscal year 22, which is great because you haven't had one for a couple of years. <clears throat> and uh, I did have an opportunity to download the data, take a look at it, talk with Ron, talk with Jennifer. And um, I was really pleased that, because, you know, you haven't had an audit for a couple of years. I was uh, surprised that I didn't find some big anomalies in the uh, general fund and the other funds. Uh, there might be some things that actually need some cleanup before year end. Uh, we did some of that today. But I didn't find gross uh, uh, things out of balance or anything weird. So I think, you know, from what I can see, the books are in really pretty good shape. And you have a new person, you know, who just started who's looking at the finances. So I'll, I've done some training with Jen. I'll do some ongoing training with her about how to um, utilize the software, particularly with general ledger management, and also how to produce reports. And so as part of that discussion, uh, Ron asked me to come up with a report format for you folks so that you can get 
internal financial reporting on a routine basis, which you, you should have, I would advocate for that strongly, and what would be a good format, and then also to walk you through it so that my, my goal here tonight is that when you receive the internal financial reports, which we're going to see a sample tonight, which you have in your hands, it'll be fun, fast, and easy to get through it. Now, I know that's a big claim. <laughs> Uh, I know that's uh, that may seem impossible, but it really can be done pretty easily if you focus on the right stuff. There's a lot of information in these reports. Doesn't mean you have to look at every line. And certainly for your purposes as a select board, the purpose of having this information is that you understand where your finances are, you have confidence uh, what they're telling you, and you understand how much money you have. This is going to be a tough year. Um, diesel, fuel, and gasoline is going to be very expensive. It's probably going to blow every town's is. budget huge. You said is. Is. Yeah. And it will be. Yeah. Anyway, um, on the positive side, though, you have a, a good fund balance, is what I see, both in highway and general fund. So, uh, you know, a town that's got a really, a really skinny fund balance for their general fund or their highway or general fund and highway combined is going to face some real challenges with that fuel cost thing. But you, you, uh, you folks seem to be in pretty good shape. But we'll get into some more specifics as we look at this. The report that you have today was generated today out of the system. So this is information as of today. Remember that you got another couple of weeks before the end of the fiscal year. You're going to have another payroll, which I'm doing on Friday. And you're going to have uh, more accounts payable come through and so on and so forth. And you'll probably have some adjustments. And then even when you close the general ledger for fiscal year 22 and you arrive at July 1st or the new fiscal year, fiscal year 23, I bet there's still invoices that are going to come in that'll be from fiscal year 22. So it's not the end of it yet. So my hope is that probably by the end of July, uh, Jen, and, and I can help her with this, and Ron will help her with this too, will produce for you a preliminary draft year end report for fiscal year 22 that will look very much like what you have in your hands today. But just understand this data is from today. You wouldn't normally produce a financial report for a board that's in the middle of a month. You know, you would wait until the end. And the other important thing, which I discussed with Jen today, is that with these reports, and I assume you would want them monthly. Yeah. Maybe you want them quarterly, but if you want, I, I recommend monthly. Mm -hmm. But you would get them after she has closed the month in the general ledger, which means closing payroll, closing AP, all that. You close the general ledger for the end of the month. You take a look for any anomalies, do some review, but you also will do your bank reconciliation for your general fund operating account. Okay. So once you've got that reconciliation done and you know what's right, then you publish the report so that you folks know that that account line is correct. That's an important piece. Okay, so that does take a little while. You got to get the statements, you know, work it in with the rest of your work. So it may be the middle of the following month after the close of the month when you actually get the report post reconciliation. Make sense? Okay, just wanted to set the expectations for what is realistic on that as well. So, um, okay, I think that takes care of that initial part. So on the second page of the PowerPoint, which has got these uh, four bars, there's one in orange right there. I wanted to give you the, you know, the, the 90,000 foot view here. When you get these financial reports, what is it you're gonna go to? I know if I was in your shoes, what I would be looking at. The first thing I'd be looking at is the cash balance in the operating fund. And that is actually the first line in the balance sheet for the general fund. We're gonna look at it, so you don't need to worry too much about it. But there's two lines in there. The first one is the balance for the general fund operating account. And then the next one is an ACH account. That's where you have ACH activity going in and out. It's about $20,000. So those two combined are the cash balances for those two deposit accounts. Okay. So that's a, for a really important thing to know, right? Right now, as of these reports, you have about $2.2 .2 million in the operating account. That sounds wonderful, right? But because you have an operating account that's pooled cash, it means that that $2.2 million represents not just the general fund operation, but also highway, also fire, also the library, all the special revenue funds, all the capital project funds, right? So there's actually a contra asset, and you're going to see this, $2.2 million in the bank, but $1.6 million is actually owned by other funds, okay? So as long as everybody understands that. So the net there is your actual cash position for your general fund is about $600,000. We'll take a look at those numbers. You want to review the fund balances for all your funds. 
you have four funds that are uh, pretty significant. And what you'll see uh, in the report that I produced for you, you'll see individual balance sheets and individual year to date revenue versus expense for those four funds. And those are general fund, highway, fire, and library, because they're significant operations and they are not reserves and they're not special projects. Okay. So where, where's the sheriff's land? Where's what? We don't have this budget. We don't have that okay. budget. We just pay. Yeah. Oh. He's, he doesn't. We just, okay. It's, it's a contract. It, it yeah, sounds like. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but the expenditure line would be in here somewhere. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> in the time. Yeah. In, yeah. In general fund. Normally policing would be in general fund. Um, there's another report that you're going to see here, which is amounts due to or from general fund. And what that is in Nemerk, again, because you've got all your cash in one account, which is a great idea. You concentrate your cash. You actually um, maximize it, your earnings when interest rates start going up on the deposit side, even though they're starting to go up on the loan side. Um, this gives you, a, you know, a, a sort of a sheet of your IOUs. You know, how much is in general fund or how much is does the general fund owe to these other funds and what are the fund balances in those funds? We're going to take a look at that report, too. But that should always balance to zero. Right. Makes sense. All the balances on these other funds has to balance out to the amount that those funds are claiming in the general fund operating account. All right. And then finally, and probably more important to most select board members that I know near and dear to your heart is the budget versus actual where are we at any point in the year? I know you look at those those nods of agreement <laughs> that yes, that's where you guys probably will focus. Okay. That's the 90,000 foot view. So you can see there's really four main categories of information. And I think that once you walk through this, you're going to be able to find this stuff and it won't be that hard for you. Okay, two types of internal financial reports. That's the next page. Section one in the format that I've given for you is balance sheets. And then at the tail end of that is the due to do from report, which is handy. Oh, can I stop for one second? Yeah. Just to put it in context when she's talking about section one and two, this is the this this report would be that monthly. That's report. a sample report. Oh, okay, this is exactly what yeah. we So if you want to look at that right now, that's cool. Or Let's take a look at that. So I, I, it works yep. well, but I want to let them know what's coming because if you want all of this or something less or more, that's what you right. can sort of listen to what Wendy okay. says and decide if, if it's too much or too little. Or yeah, more. and if there's anything about this presentation that you would like to change, uh, let me know. Um, uh, let Ron know and we can we can change a format. But the first one's just a cover page. It's going to have the date of the report and moving forward when you're in the new fiscal year, it's going to say what period. Uh, Nemerk is period driven and you have 12 periods, 12 months throughout the year. Period one would be July. That's your first period in the new fiscal year. Um, and there's just two sections. Section one, balance sheets and section two, revenue versus expense. So if you go to the next page, you see the sections and I've identified the funds where you have reports. And we can go to this first page right here, which is actually, it says page one at the top or the bottom. Ron and I numbered the pages. We realized after we printed all these, we should have written the, the page numbers on top before we copy. So yeah, that was a pro move, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Fix with the pen. There you go. On page one and two is your balance sheet for the general fund. So what you can see at the top is assets. So look at our equation here. Assets equals liabilities plus fund balance. For those of you who are familiar with private sector accounting, think of fund balance as owner's equity, but obviously the owners of a municipality or what, all of us who live in the municipality, right? So it's fund balance in uh, the terms of fund accounting when it comes to governmental accounting. So, and it's the same equation you have in a private sector. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity or fund balance. So that's pretty easy. Or you can think of your fund balance is your all of your assets minus your liabilities, right? Same equation. So here at the top part, you see assets, and then you have a total for all assets. But at the top, you see the $2.2 .2 million I was referencing. Now, I don't know that that is reconciled as of middle of the month here, but let's assume yeah, it yeah, were. Yeah. When it is reconciled, that will be your number that will tell you how much money at the end of the month, it's being reported how much cash is in the general fund operating account right there you can make notes on this right all over it if you want that's why you got copies. Um, the ACH checking account that's it's a other little $20,000 account You actually would add the two and you would reconcile both of them. And then this due to from other funds, so all these other funds have a claim on some of that $2.2 .2 million, the ARPA fund your reserve funds the special revenue funds all that. 
the library. So those are the claims on that $2.2 million asset. I call that a contra asset account. That's where you get that actual in that $2.2 million bank account, the general fund has approximately $600,000 to its own name. So there's the clarification on that. That's I think it's going to take, I'd rather have the PowerPoint finished only because it flows pretty well. Yep. But I just, okay. you know, when you're thinking, when you're, I'm just trying to help Wendy and me and uh, Jen after this meeting, we need to hear from the board members exactly what you want to know so we can tailor this package. So is a sample building? tonight. Yep. Okay. If okay. you want to see a one pager because you're only interested in that and you really don't want to get the 30 pages, we can do that too. So don't, just feel free to guide us and listen to what's happening. And then yeah, I'm always someone who wants to give more rather than less on this stuff, but that's my own bias, yeah. I guess. Okay, liabilities, you can see what they are, but what I want to draw your attention to page two, and we'll talk more about this later. On page two, you can see a fund balance of $166,053.14. That was last year's ending fund balance. So when you closed fiscal year 21, that fund balance for what was accumulated in 21 and what was prior year 20 collapsed to that number. So at the end of fiscal year 21, your fund balance, your difference between your assets and your liabilities was $166,000 and change. Fund balance current year. This is important because every fund operates this very same way with the balance sheet and the year-to-date data. The fund balance of the current year, $425,867.82. That comes from performance. That comes from revenues greater than expenses as of the day we printed this report. So the total fund balance for any of these funds is what was the fund balance where you left off last year when you closed the books? What is the fund balance being added to it or possibly subtracted from it this current year? And what is then the net or the total fund balance? And you can see your fund balance of the general fund is $591,920.96 in bold. That's last year's leftover plus this year's. Yes, it, last year's leftover plus this year's performance. But that's as of today. Yeah. That number's gonna change by the time we get to June, end of June, all right? So just giving you an idea how this math flows, right? But if we got this report monthly, we would be able to open last month's and this month to see where we're at. Yeah, but yeah. also this la the last year uh, one, Matt, the fund balance for the prior year is always going to be the same well, because you closed yes, it. Right. Yeah. right. It's yeah. the current your fund balance is going to right. change depending on your activity. Right. But in the past, all we did was look at Warren, so we didn't really have this to look at. So this yeah. is, this is right. yeah. going forward, this is going to be absolutely huge for us. Okay. Section two, revenue and expense. I don't really need to explain this to you guys. You know what it is. We'll get there and you'll take a look at it. All right. So the next page. Fund classifications and governmental accounting. Don't be scared by this. All right. There are three main types of governmental uh, funds in governmental accounting. We have governmental funds, we have proprietary funds, and fiduciary funds. You folks in Hyde Park are so darn lucky. You only have governmental funds. You don't have proprietary funds. Those are water and sewer funds or parking uh, transit center or some crazy thing. And you don't have fiduciary funds. Those are things like trust funds, uh, cemetery fund might be a fiduciary fund, that kind of thing. You don't have either one of those to worry about. Yay. Simple picture. This is great. So of the governmental fund types, there are five different kinds. And of those five different kinds, you only have three. And they're in blue. <laughs> you have general fund. You have a general fund and you operate your highway as a, as a general fund, as well as your fire and uh, the library. You have special revenue funds. You know what those are. Those are uh, uh, funds you've created where the revenue is coming usually from an outside source. Your reappraisal fund, your uh, records maintenance fund. It comes from, you know, you got fees that come in and you take a piece of that, you put it in that fund and you have it. What's that? No. Depends on where you put those. Most of them seem to be in general fund or highway. Yeah. Or, you know, or one of the reserves. Yeah. yeah. What are put around this? ARPA is a special revenue fund. Yes, because it's money from an outside source and they are dictating how you can use that money, okay? It's federal. And then capital projects funds, 
those are ones where um, you are receiving, you may receive money from an outside source for that, or you may allocate it internally, but this is your capital planning, right? So a lot more grant money in there, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and you may end up at, you know, having a grant run through one of those. You can actually find grant, uh, some towns do a grant fund as a standalone, but that really, that gets kind of hard too, because you're trying to operate it all in one place when it really applies to a bunch of different funds. I think put it where you think it belongs makes a lot more sense to me. All right, let's talk about balance sheets. So the general fund, the highway fund, fire fund, and library are all considered general fund types. We talked about that. I feel that each one of those deserves its own individual balance sheet so that you can look at it in detail. Those are some pretty major operating funds for the town. So that's why here they're presented on page one and two, you have the general fund. On page three, you have your highway fund. On page four, you have fire. Again, these are the handwritten numbers, either on the bottom or the top of the pages. And page five is the library. This gives you an opportunity to provide more focus on these funds when you see that, you know, the detailed balance sheet, you know, individually prepared for each one of these funds. The special revenue and the capital projects funds, you know, there's not a lot of activity in those. I mean, it really is, you know, how many transactions do you have in those compared to general fund or highway? Not many. So those are ones that I would recommend you look at in aggregate. And if you look at page six, now I know this type is really small and we get lots of complaints about it, believe me. But on page six, you have the aggregate for the special revenue funds balance sheets. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, and ARPA is right there. Okay. Yeah. I wanna, uh, wanna talk about this a little bit. So again, you remember we talked about, you have a prior year fund balance, then you have activity in the current year that has an impact, and then you have total. Same here. About two thirds of the way down the page, you see total prior year's fund balance, and you can read it right across for each fund. Each fund is a column. You got your fund balance current year, and you got total fund balance. I want to draw your attention to uh, the flood fund. Now, this one I know was a, a you know a FEMA project, and it sits right now negative three hundred and thirty thousand dollars to the general fund makes sense you fronted the whole thing you're waiting for fema to, to send some money from you to you and until you get it it's just going to be that way so that is perfectly legitimate to see that negative fund balance right there in that fund because of what is going on at the time okay i want to talk a little bit about another fund that's got that's here um the recreation fund and that is the third column and you notice at the top due to from other funds. So this fund doesn't have a bank account of its own, right? It's all in that pool of cash. And it currently has um, 10, about $10,000 due to that fund from general fund. So out of that general fund operating account, about 10,000 belongs to recreation reserve. Um, you see the fund balance in the prior year was just under $13,000. But you also see the fund balance current year is a negative $2,756. So, there may not have been a lot of revenues coming in, but we made some expenditures and it ate up the fund balance a little bit. So now you can see that ending um, fund balance matches the due to do from exactly. Okay. So your balance sheets give you at least a point in time, assets, liabilities, and fund balance. So how much money do we have in these, in the, within these funds? You always look at that fund balance, okay? Um, fund balance should be positive for any fund, um, and uh, any fund with a negative fund balance needs resolving, and obviously your, uh, your flood fund isn't going to be resolved for a while, but it will be eventually. Fund balance classifications are kind of important. You don't have any classifications right now, and what I mean by that, generally what you will focus on after you get your audit done you will have some definition on your general fund fund balance. And there are, there are actually categories that the auditor will be required to look at and examine and tell you, give the, the journal entry uh, uh, to Ron and to Jennifer to say, okay, of that fund balance you have in general fund, there's a certain amount of it that's non-spendable, certain amount that may be restricted, certain amount that might be committed, and a certain amount assigned. And we'll talk about some of that. And then what remains, 
So the total fund balance minus any of those classifications, if you have them, would leave you your unassigned fund balance. And as you go forward, after you have those definitions, that will be a really important number to watch for the general fund. And again, we talked about the do to do froms. It, it allows you just to keep track of, you know, how much is owed to the general fund or how much of the general fund operating account owed to the other funds. And you can see that on page eight in your in your report. You always want to make sure it balances to zero, but this sort of gives you an overview. These are, these are actually your fund balances for all these other funds. So this is this is a pretty nice snapshot, I think. So you want to know how much is available in ARPA? There it is, three hundred and fifty-five thousand nine hundred twenty-two dollars and twenty-three cents at this moment, based on the information we have here. Okay. Let's move on to revenue and expense because I know you've all been waiting for that one because that's where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, right? And again, I've recommended that general fund, highway, fire, and library be presented separately because these are budgeted annually. That's important. And these are kind of your major funds, major or maybe fire and library would be considered non-major funds depends on how the auditor looks at this how material is the amounts that we're talking about in each of these funds but they are the ones you're going they're budgeted so you definitely want to see your year to date budget versus actual for every month and what i like to do here your general fund is pretty big it's six pages because it goes from page nine to page 15. so i always start at the bottom and i always want to look and see let's go to page 15. Oh, it's not 15, I'm sorry, 14, I apologize. And you can see that we have a total expenditures, it's third line up from the bottom. There's also total revenues, which is over on page two probably. So you can see uh, you have spent 99% of your budget. We got nice percentages there, right? And you're right there with having spent the money, right? Um, but we also see where it says total general fund, $425,867.82. Where did we see that number before? On page two, current year fund balance, right? It's the result of our activity. So this number is the result of the revenues minus the expenses, giving you that $425,000 bump up in your general fund fund balance. Activity is producing a, a um, an outcome, and that outcome arrives on the balance sheet. So I usually start there. Okay, is it positive? Do I have revenues greater than expenses? Right, and if I don't, there might be a reason why. But in this case, obviously, revenues are better than expenses. Now you're at ninety nine percent of budget. Let's look back at revenue. That tells me that revenue has got to be stronger than what was anticipated, perhaps, and we can see that on page ten. You see that revenues were budgeted at $2.587 million, and you actually have $2.988 million. Now, it's definitely not taxes, because that's the first line on page nine. You always have some folks that don't pay on time, and you can clearly see that here. So there were other areas of revenue that were better than what you anticipated. And you can see a couple of those things. So after looking at the bottom line, look at the expenses, look at the revenues. And again, this would be for any fund that's budgeted. Then where I see where it might be off, then I wanna look at the different um, departments, I call them. Uh, so under revenues, we could look at um, the tax revenues. You can see they're a little bit lower than what was, um, they're about 99%, just a little bit lower than what was budgeted. But where are we higher? We're obviously higher in license and licenses and permits. We're at 141% of budget. Hey, yay, cool. Um, we look down um, interest income. This was interesting. $1,000 was budgeted and almost $14,000 was realized here in this report. So you can, you can then go by section by section or department by department is what I call it and see what is making up the difference in my overall budget revenue versus expense. Again, if you wanna drill down, you can drill down as detailed as you want. But this gives you a methodology for starting big and then going smaller and going to more detail as you need it. 
I want to look at the highway budget for a second. So, so just, just yeah, because so when, when we're looking through this, just because it catches my eye, if you were looking through this report, when you start looking at, is that what you follow to see where the percentages are? Like, if I see something at 60%, does that worry you? Like, or, you know, well, it just makes me think, why is it so different? Because at this stage of the game, you got it, you should be at least 11 out of 12, right? Whatever percent that would be, 11 months out of 12. I mean, we're a little bit further into June than that, but obviously when you get your year in, you're at, you know, you, sh you should be through the budgetary cycle and you would technically should be at 100% for all expenditures and maybe revenues. But of course, you guys are doing these budgets, what, months before you actually start them. So things happen. Um, but yeah, the percentages are an easy way, Matt, to look where are the anomalies. You know, some of them are easily explained. So like the fire department, for example, I look at that and I just, everything is 47%, 77%, 67%, 76%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed that too. There, um, so the, the fire department is on page 18. You know, they got all their transfer from the town in, in the, on the ledger anyway, right? Um, so the revenues are right there. And the expenses uh, in total, right? If we look at total expenses, Matt, um, we are looking at 76% overall right. because what was budgeted is 118,000. They actually spent 90. But remember, right. we've also got a payroll, right? Through yeah. June. Okay. So there's a few thousand dollars there. But still, we're still going to be to the good here, I think. Right. Huh? Susan and I have dealt with this before about the, the way that the fire department bills that payroll. Yeah. And it's a really an accounting it's a skill to manage uh, payroll that's earned in one fiscal year, but paid in the next. Just so, accrue it. Yeah. 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 yeah so that, but there's a, a, there's a hangover from the prior year. So when you. But it's a journal entry to fix it. Yeah. It's, yeah. And put so it back in the right year. You'll see on some notes, uh, fire salaries payable. Or, yeah, it's really it doesn't. It's so if there's I, any difference of thousand or two. Honestly, I wouldn't even do that. I would let it flow to fiscal year twenty three, make the journal adjustment, put it back in twenty two. Yeah, that's, that's how I do it. That's simple. Yeah, easy breezy. So it's all, yeah, it always posts. Man, the next question. No, I just right. I, because they're my department, and obviously, I mean, if they got twenty six thousand dollars out there. I know that they got some expenses coming up for the truck, for example. We want to get that in this year, actually, right? When we close the GL. That money, let's say you have twenty thousand dollars left over. Yeah. You know, revenue is better than expense. That twenty thousand is going to close to your fund balance. Right. It's going right. to be fund balance but, for the so fund. But because be it's there. been such a pain, in the, they 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 have to come here, ask for that money to come out of general fund. We have to vote on it. Right? Oh, so if it's spent out of the budget, it's easier. I see what you're yeah. asking. I see what you're asking. Well, okay. Yeah, Only because true. I'm part of the recreation, I understand how this works. Yeah. Now. <laughs> it's now a lot those, now those, Trust me, it's a lot harder to get it back those, later on. Those big decisions are why you guys make the big yeah. bucks. Yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right. All right. Anyway, in highway, I did want to talk about this a little bit on page 15 because that's where highway starts. Um, this is totally explainable. But if you were to look at this without knowing the background here, you might say, whoa, what happened in highway? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, under uh, revenues, we're, we're over on revenues because there were some grants that came in that maybe weren't anticipated when, when you created this budget, right? So you got a little bit more, it's 126% of budget. But then when we look down to expenses, which actually is on page 17, and we look at expenditures again, keeping our broad view, looking at our totals columns. We were budgeted for 965,000 and we spent 1.9 million dollars plus change. Wow, what happened there? And you can see what happened there, the total, the difference between, actually in this case, it's expenses minus revenues, right? Right. The expenses are greater than the revenues minus seven hundred fifty two thousand six hundred eighty dollars okay now that sounds really scary but there's explanation for all of this right and it's because you booked an expenditure on page 15 of a paving project over a million dollars but you actually funded that project in the prior fiscal year yeah okay so what i'm going to tell you to do now go back to page three which is your balance sheet for the highway 
These white balance sheets are so great. Love them all day long. Page three, highway. <laughs> We are so besties. You know that, right? <laughs> I'm a guest. Well, you got, I can already I'm see, like I can already, 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 already see me hate ass. <laughs> you got a kid yeah, in Alaska yeah. or a yeah. 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 yeah, there you go. Right, we're just, right. We're just like meant to be. Okay. <laughs> so let's look at our balance sheet. What was the fund balance last year in Iway? Do, 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 1.5 million. Do, 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 do. Yeah. All right. Go team. Yes, you got it right. Because you'd funded it, you brought in loan proceeds, you had the money waiting there to do this project. You had one and almost $1.6 million in fund balance in highway at the end of fiscal year 21. Obviously, you knew you were going to spend the money. You did the project. It reduced that fund balance down by $752,000, that big scary number. You still got a significant, at this moment, significant uh, fund balance in a highway of $831,000. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that because that's like the yeah. opposite of the general fund, right? But there was, it was easily explainable. Okay, so reviewing totals for revenues and expense for each fund, oh, yeah. if, if you want to go there, then look at department subtotals. I call them departments. It's just depart sections within each uh, the revenue or the expense. And then look at those account lines if they're really out of whack. And that's when you start asking questions about stuff. And you can ask Ron or you can ask, you know, the the highway manager, you know, why is that off? You know, whatever. They might have a um, a reason for that, or they I'm sure they do. And then I make a note about the percentage of the budget column, which Matt noticed. That's an easy way to, to pick out your anomalies. Makes sense, right? Okay. So and he said it was going to be 50%. But he'll, he'll, does he stock that back up yet, Ryan? Oh, so we have, we that, have a bill coming. Uh, you'll have a bill coming. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So it's going to be on the budget. Yeah, he thought he was going to be. Yeah. Like we told him we had to do that. Was the That's deal. right. That was the deal. That's right. <laughs> So one other thing I want to show you about uh, the revenue versus expense is that the special revenue funds, which start on page 22, they don't look like those consolidated formats you saw with the balance sheets. They're not all squished on one page and really tiny type, but you actually have for each one of these funds a separate, um, a separate breakout on the revenues, the expenses, and changes to fund balance. You see that you you've got your uh, your total uh, at the bottom, and that's your change to fund balance for each one of these. I happen to notice on page uh, twenty three, you have uh, an economic development fund that has money in it. We can look at that balance sheet, um, and that balance sheet is on. Uh, it's one of those consolidated ones. Let me tell you, I think it's on page six. Yeah. yeah, where it has money in it. But there hasn't been activity in this fund for a couple of years because I look back at the history, I saw zeros on the year to date and I thought, oh, I wonder what's going on with that. But Ron tells me you have anticipation that you want to use that fund, so you're going to keep it active. You've got money in it anyway, and you have a history, but there it is, ready for use when you are. That was kind of, a, you know, so when you see this one, if you see zeros on this, you know, don't freak out. It just means you haven't had any activity, even though you've got uh, money allocated for that fund. So um, in the special revenue funds on page 24, I found a, a little thing today when I was working with Jen, and uh, she's going to research this. At the top of page 24, this is the Recreation Reserve Fund. Why we have a negative revenue, I don't know. <laughs> Because we, we spent more. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is take a look at that on That's page twenty-four. That's uh, something's wrong there. A minus nine hundred eighty-six dollar revenue. I know it's a lot, of, not a lot of money, but uh, we did notice that it was an AP check. It may have been a refund. So she's going to do some research. This will be a good project for her to do some research. Why? What happened there? It also seems like it's it's part of uh, the expenses also because it's the Hyde Park Athletic Club. <laughs> You know, they had expenses, but they had maybe a refund on something. So she's going to look that up. She's going to find the answer to that. And that won't look that like that by the time you get to the end of June, is my guess. You hope. So I mean, and if it is for real, she can tell you why. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there are those kinds of little things. 
that I'm um, guessing that should have been in the budget line if I'm just looking at the numbers. So we run the concessions and normally we bring in money. Uh huh. Yeah. It's normally a cash payment. That looks like what one of our weekend hosted what a band. Are. What a band for money. But a refund? Proceeds from what proceeds. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So we bring, so we, we, use the town's money to buy concessions, but then we from the money we make off concessions is supposed to go back. So that's where we're, that's where the, it says a negative budget, but the, this is the sub, this is a sub account mm -hmm. to our high park. Yeah. It's not a negative budget. It's a negative actual expense. Correct, but I'm guessing that should have went into the budget. I don't know. Okay. I think this you is think it's a, re it's a revenue to rent. Yes. To rent. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, should be a revenue. That's now. my guess. I'm just, yeah. it's well, she'll find money. out more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't have time to research it, so I, I yeah, don't know. Um, on page 26 is your ARPA fund, and I just want to draw some attention to this. This is your revenue versus expense. I just use the budget status report. It's just easy. Even though all these special revenues in these capital funds are not budgeted, um, I just like the presentation better. And, and when there are expenditures, you can see what you know pretty clearly what they are. Um, plus, you get that total at the bottom that goes right back to your balance sheet. So you've got your tie in there between your uh, your year to date performance and your balance sheet. So there were two sources of the ARPA revenue. If you're wondering what these were um, in the original ARPA legislation, you know, there were designations that the money would come to the state. They would figure out based on population what each town would get. So that's that municipal piece. But then in Vermont, and then there was a piece for counties. Now there are other states that have county government. Now here, we don't really have significant county government. So the decision was made, a lot of back and forth. We're gonna take that money for the county allocation in Vermont and spread it pro rata among the towns. So each town got another bump, which was quite significant here. I also wanna call attention to the fact that you were gonna get these same amounts this coming fiscal year. Okay, so as long as you know that. And then you only have one project expense so far, um, that's the 15,000. So that's pretty easy to see what happened there. And then page 27 is that flood event where you can see what's, what's occurring there. And obviously when you get the revenue in, it'll come into the general fund, it'll be transferred here, it'll rectify what's going on and pay back um, the yeah. town, yeah, yeah. okay. And then your capital funds, again, they're not budgeted either, but these are important to look at for the purposes of your capital planning. You know, what are you gonna purchase the next year, so on and so forth. So you got some pretty significant balances there, which is very healthy and, and really terrific. Um, I made some notes and we're on a, the next to the last page of the PowerPoint. Um, going forward, I'm assuming you're going to receive these uh, for the prior month after reconciliation. We talked about that. And to recap, you know, your fund balances are healthy. Numbers, to me, look pretty good. There might be some anomalies. There's going to be some stuff the auditors are going to find. Otherwise, they don't feel like they earn their living. Um, the budgetary compliance is generally good. Those are my opinions. Um, general fund operating account. Again, we talked about this at 2.2 million, 1.6 million is represented by other funds or their stake in that um, operating uh, account, leaving about $600,000 cash available for general fund operating at this time. Um, your budget to actual, you know, we talked about that expenses uh, were less than revenues at this moment of by about $425,000. That's your current year fund balance that goes right to the balance sheet. Um, highway, we discussed what happened there. And last year fund balance was one and a half million due to prior year borrowing for the project. We talked about that. And we talked about the recreation thing, this little negative revenue, and that will be researched uh, to find out what happened there. There might be some other things. If I give this a little more time, a little more review, maybe at the end of the month, I might find something else that, that um, I'll ask uh, Jen to research and see what that might be. But if anything looks weird to you in your review of these, you should also ask, you know, can you tell me why that is? So, and then finally, um, governmental fund balance classifications. This really is about the general fund. The auditors will look at each fund and determine what's restricted um, and what's not. For your special revenue funds and your capital funds, they will consider the entire balance to be re restricted because it's meant for a special purpose. 
But for the and for highway, they will probably take the same approach. They'll say that fund balance of 800,000 is restricted for highway because it's in the highway fund. Your general fund, however, um, you need to understand what that remainder is, that unassigned fund balance. What does it mean? Sorry. Go what ahead. does it mean when it, like, I see something and it says like under cost and that parenthesis and it says shares? Where are you? Like just page four. It was a question he, I brought up. So like I, I had saw a cost here. Page five? Like, under the, the, the library for Exxon Mobil for $58,000. And it says thirteen hundred. That's an investment account. Those are shares of stock. oil company oil stock. Company. Right. Stock. So our library owns yeah. shares. Yes. That's what this seems to say. Yeah. They're making they're making bank right now on that. <laughs> <laughs> just just say it. It just doesn't, yeah. I think I would ask library trustees, yeah, I guess. How often is it that a town account owns an investment? They were donated uh, 30 years ago um, yeah. when it was free almost. So that creates, Not anymore. That creates revenues. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm, su I'm surprised <laughs> those aren't in their reserve. Okay. And that's yeah, that probably was, what happened. That, that was a donation that we discovered when I first started working here. No Nobody kidding. knew they existed, even the library trustees. No kidding. And Someone when we uncovered it, everybody was happy. The bit. And since then, we have treated it as uh, interest only usage. So the, the stock dividend use only, and then the mm -hmm. stock stays in, in that side. <laughs> and that's where, on the revenue side, they're supposed to be sending 12000 a year on the budget. You'll see library revenue. That's where that money comes from. Gotcha. Is. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, that's the, that's the short story, but it was a where. Who? Oh, you know, it was like a didn't know very didn't strange. Yeah, yeah, they had owned it for 20 years and they yeah. just weren't managing well, it or accounting for it. That was a trustee. I never knew that. Oh, <laughs> really? well, it's, yeah, it was a, it's here in the uh, financial. Cool. It is very cool. There's so many pages and I just caught it. <laughs> <laughs> so Woo, go Matt. One of the benefits of these reports. Right? Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, I do reconciliations for some other towns, and I see other towns that actually have like some of their reserve money, like their cemetery money, particularly because it's usually a permanent fund, which means that you're only drawing the int interest mm -hmm. for the operation and you're leaving the principal there, kind of thing, um, mostly. And they usually have them invested in, uh, you know, some sort of mutual fund or something. That is not unusual to see that. So fund balance classifications. So after the auditors uh, come in and take a look at fiscal year 22, they are going to hand over a journal entry to Jen, and they're going to advise the town uh, as of the end of fiscal year 22, was there any portion of your general fund, fund balance that was non-spendable, such as a prepaid expense? Was there any amount that was restricted? What's restricted? That means amounts that can be spent only for specific purposes stipulated by constitution, external resource providers, or through enabling legislation. So this would be a grant, something like that. Uh, committed, a committed fund balance is that's, vo that's what's voted on by the voters. Basically, that's what they consider committed. Assigned is you folks. If you folks say, oh, we have an emergency repair to something, to a building, whatever, and we've got to do it, let's assign the $5,000. That would trigger um, Ron to let Jen know we, we need to increase the assignment here because the board has made a decision to assign that money for that purpose. And then anything that doesn't fall under any of those four assignment categories or classifications is your unassigned. That's the remaining fund balance not allocated to those other categories that really represents your working capital. You know, how much money do you have to operate the town on a routine basis? And um, Ron tells me that you have a policy for unassigned fund balance at 20%. Mm -hmm. So 20% so. of annual revenue is the cap of how much that unassigned fund balance can be. If you go over that, which we do after the audit report comes out, we'll do the 20% calculation. Then we'll have a discussion at the board meeting saying, you guys are over 100,000. What do you want to do with that? Because your management policy says to either return that to the voters come up with a special project, go to the voters at March with a special question and get mm -hmm. it back down. Same thing happens on the bottom side. If it goes below 10%, then you're supposed to get it back <laughs> up into the 10 to 20%. Next time you set tax rates, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So that's how that all works, but it's coming up. And that is, I, you know, you guys are to be congratulated on having that fund balance policy, the unassigned fund balance policy, because so many towns don't do that and they get these huge surpluses and they don't know what to do with them. And that's just wrong. You should be looking at that every year. Are you over? Okay, then you make that decision. Are you under? Then you make that decision. But it, that's that sweet spot of 10 to 20 that keeps you operating correctly, but doesn't overtax your taxpayers. So that is a really important thing and wonderful that you have that. I'm sure you guys have questions. I was just, but I just say that sweet spot is the what led us with that flood. We didn't have to borrow money and we aren't paying Bingo. borrowed money waiting for the feds to give us back our money. Yes. That's, that's the advantage of having that kind, Absolutely. Of, that kind of resource. You yeah. get hit with something mm -hmm. and you don't and expect. It's not costing your taxpayers so, a lot of money. Yeah. I know there are towns that actually borrow to make payroll basically because especially those that are on cash and the cycle of the tax uh, tax bill and the tax collection is like late in the year, like November and their and their, uh, their, their calendar year and their cash. Oh my God, yeah. As a town entity, we'll say fire department, if they have their own account, is that something that we need to make sure that we're reporting back to through the network system? Absolutely. Okay. The auditor will ding you if you don't. That's what they, the library does. They will be looking, they, they have to actually make a statement that they have reviewed all the funds related to the town and they are all, they are all reported in the audit. And if they find that there's some little so, account out there that somebody's been running roughshod on the side for a while for the town, no, that's not good. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I know where you're what going. Where's going? Yeah. yeah. Now the fire department does have a reserve fund for both vehicles and equipment. Right. You know, I mean, they have they have two separate funds well, for capital plus an operating fund. The board could choose if you've got twenty thousand dollars left over in the fire department operational fund to put it in one of those reserves for future use, right. I'll, I'll or just leave it where it is. I'll say no more. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll talk okay. to Jennifer to make sure <laughs> that needs to be reported by you. Any anything that's raised by any department of the town has to be reported. On a monthly, on a on a quarterly. I think Anything that's up to you folks. Has to be reported. I'd say monthly. Monthly would be yeah. more accurate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not where you're going with that. Yeah. Get into the report. Yeah. But open book. We like the recreation account. We have to have a separate account because we take money in, mm -hmm. and because all of our sports sign up stuff comes from parents. So when parents. It's through Blue, Blue Sombrero, which is a sign up. It's, it's all online. Yeah. Uh -huh. Our accounts don't allow access to people to do that. So we have to have a separate account for that. Mm -hmm. So then you would just report Even it back donations. to the town. You get donations. Yes. Where does that, um, does that appear in the general fund? It doesn't appear on that at all. That's another one that needs to come in. <laughs> and and that, that if you've got a separate checking account that those deposits are going into, that should be reconciled by uh, Jen. Yeah. Jen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it'd be good if we had all the heads of these departments brought yeah. in, and so we can uh, make just, sure yeah, that this, this, just, this yeah. just started in September. So the, we're, we're mm -hmm. still learning. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a nonprofit. The, the person, the, the way it's run, it's run through Little League. So actually, Little League hosts our account for us. Okay. So it's a nonprofit. But the, still, the money flowing in and the money flowing out belongs to the town operation. Think so well after sombrero takes a cut yeah they can yeah. send the net Get it. They can yeah send i know that proceed check to it's like paypal or something yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah that, that's not a problem you can have managers of the money you just have to get right. the, the net has to come in yeah. right it's just what the library does yeah so it's paypal account. accounts yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Library said, essentially if i just get whoever's running the account right now and just say hey Exactly. Report this again. Yeah, exactly. and you, and you got time to do it. Do it. Do it this month. By the end of this month, so sure. that you've yeah, got something you can do a journal entry here and have it yeah. in here. And because otherwise, and, if you don't show that, then we're not going to be able to show the revenue offsetting your expense. And a lot of towns run recreation as a net zero. They they require fees, <laughs> and concession stands to pay the hundred percent of the expense. So when those are in line, that's a great 
condition. If we don't see, it's going to look like you're right. not covering your expenses. Right. This Thank all, you for bringing it up, though. Well, yeah, this this yeah. all this all came as a, because our sports our school wasn't going to run sports this year, so we yeah. hosted it. Yeah. It's, yeah. Been great. It's okay, learning. but you got time to to put that in here and make sure because the auditor I I have seen audits where there there was a write up you know about um you know material weaknesses and stuff because they found accounts that were operated by the town but never recorded in the general ledger yeah okay any other questions no like i think said i just think we should get uh, all the department heads together and, and make them aware of the expectations so that this all balances you have the benefit of this program being available on youtube tomorrow at noon Oh, there you go. <laughs> the public access channel will spit this out as a posting on YouTube, so you can type in High Park Select Board yeah, June, say. and make and have them commit to watching it for the forty-five minutes. Because it's a good, great background, even if they're not into finance. I think the presentation was straightforward yeah. and mm -hmm. sort of clear, yeah. so anybody could sort of follow along, especially if you have the papers. We can make sure everybody. Yeah. Who does that exercise. And Ron, maybe you want to take that unstapled copy and just scan it scan and you could send it to the department people. Yeah. That would be fine. Yeah, the, because maybe they should take a look at this. Maybe they'll see something because I was just thinking that. What can happen sometimes is stuff gets miscoded. Right. Like an expense that's supposed to be on one line really belongs somewhere else. Yeah. And maybe even in a different fund. That can happen. Yeah. So and yeah. The library was wondering that too. Just in the wrong place. Special things. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah, that was, that was thank great. Thank you. It was good. Okay. Great presentation. Thank you. And uh, again, um, if 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 you have quest further questions, if you got recommendations or something that you don't like quite about this format, make sure you let Ron know. He'll let me know, and we can we can adjust it accordingly. I'm just hoping it will continue to be like a working document, and we'll just keep absolutely focusing on it each each meeting. Yep, that's Whatever what it's there for. Up, pull it out, make a note. Look yes. It. Well, if you get these every month, you'll you'll be on top of it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Oh, awesome. Thank you. I, I love doing that. <laughs> Actually, another thing I do that I have been doing with other towns is review their audit with the select board, so they know what they're looking at. That would be a bad idea. Yeah. I'd be happy to do it for you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You, you as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, Wallace and Jones parcel. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, no. The uh, support of town finance, past volunteer support, CPA services. Uh, and Wendy and I, on the way down to the meeting where I said, Wendy, you mentioned before that one of the holes, if you will, in the training of finance manager is the whole audit process which only a cpa can help with and she said jen would really benefit from having a, a sort of an on-call support person just like i call an engineer she should have somebody that's pre-approved under a services agreement with the select board to say i have a, I have a problem i need to get and that person could help you know, she's she, asking for that yeah she, she may be at 85 percent or 80 percent but who's who's going to be there on demand for when she needs the 15 percent the important part of it if i may oh sorry <laughs> uh, the important part of that is the auditor can only go so far with helping give you right. an instruction sure okay because sure. they're supposed to be looking at this from a third party perspective so in audit preparation or even understanding all those journal entries they're going to they're just going to lay them on your desk yeah. and say you got to put these in there well what do they mean right okay so that that would be a really Good idea to get her started on the right foot and uh, and understanding that process. Okay. Yeah. We can do the system training. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Very much. So we have a year for. Yeah, so I guess the idea is usually when we get to this point of saying we need to fill a hole of technical services, we'll get two or three quotes from two or three different individuals if we can find them, which is a hard thing to market or whatever you want to call And then Jennifer would. That wasn't what I was looking for. I know, sorry. <laughs> then Jennifer would, would basically make a recommendation that she's met with two or three people and she'd like to do a formal agreement with the board for under these terms and conditions. And then she would have access to that person directly. So 
kind of simple, but I think we need to find somebody first and maybe another one just to counterbalance what the offers are because they might be twenty or thirty dollars an hour on difference. Who knows? And then when she's comfortable with somebody through an interview process, get the uh, get the agreement done. Yeah. We can do that pretty quickly, I think, because there's there's only a handful of really only a handful of municipal accounting firms. That's what I was and saying. Most of them are closing up shop in Vermont, so a lot of Maine and New Hampshire companies are backfilling now. Uh, uh, Sullivan Powers, for example, is a firm you might have heard from, and there's two or three other ones that might have one staff member that kind of specializes in being on call. Right. Knowing, so that, we have on a, call knowing that we have an outside auditor that's going to come in for the, the real work. Right. But for 12 months, there's always some, because the audits are really a 12 month process because you want to have things ready for your auditor. Mm -hmm. So you can't really do that in a week or two. You have to kind of plan it through the year. And that's what that CPA. Helpful. position would do yeah yeah, yeah. you really are strong just like having good reports is going to be a support a strong board understanding finances having staff with an outside support will really st strengthen that and make the town be in really good shape um, overall yeah with those pieces i agree so that would be a recommendation at some point if you're agreeable to let jen proceed or you know come back and I don't know if it'd be the 28th, but maybe in July with some ideas that she's come up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be great. Yeah. All right, I'll just make that note. To yeah. Okay. Let me know what you find for options. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Know. I, I think it's just contacting some of the firms and see if they even, even if they'll let somebody loose. Yeah. You know, some firms are saying we don't accept new clients right. because their staff is all half of what it used to be. Mm. So I don't know what we'll we'll ask and see if there's. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Wallace and Jones Parsons. Uh, use of right of way for access and utilities and draft license agreement. Okay, so just a little background. We have the applicants here, and I think it's sort of a um, a new situation we have with Wallace and Jones. We have a uh, two unique requests that we usually don't get. Usually with the 1111 permits, we have, hey, I'm building a house, I need to come onto the town highway. Mark goes out, he looks for a sight line, he looks for drainage, he says, okay, you can go, here's a list of conditions, call me when your contractor shows up. It's pretty basic stuff. These particular ones are ones on a trail and one is on a um, a long private water and sewer line in the town road, which we typically don't entertain or haven't been asked for that. So because that's a unique situation, both of them with private infrastructure and a public road and use of a private, uh, sorry, a, a public trail, which is prohibited by the policy, <coughs> it generated the agenda item to see how you want to deal with those. And these are really just really totally case by case. Mark is not supportive of running private utilities in public road just because there's issues with liability and repairs and what happens if something goes wrong and does he have to chase the landowner and who pays the bill if they don't do it and all that kind of stuff. On the policy that you all adopted in 2019, prohibiting homes on public trails, the Jones family wants to get going on their project and the town attorney has recommended that you make this exception basically through a license agreement, which last meeting the board approved Brian reviewing and signing the list to speed that <laughs> process up. So I, I think that the recommendation is to follow the town attorney's recommendation, get these things in place so that there's basically an expanded set of conditions to deal with Mark's concerns. Mm -hmm. You could, on the flip side, just say, no, we don't want any private utilities more than from the edge of the right of way to the, the, to the water and sewer line in the road, more like a 30 or 20 foot extension into the road which is mostly the classic ones you see. That's a lot of the work that the water um, project had happened. Very short extensions into the road. Um, but, you know, from, from a practical point of view, if it's put in the right way, if it has the precautions in there, if damage is done, there's a way to deal with that. It's more usage, more risk, but I think the, the license agreement allows it to go forward with, with that extra. I don't know if we can, and I think the issue is, we couldn't deal with the higher risk and not deal with those additional conditions. I think that was the outcome of 
the, the, why the recommendation was done. And that license agreement is signed by Brian and the landowners. It goes in the land records at the same time the 1111 permit is signed. So it's a package deal. That's the proposal. Um, if everybody does everything right during installation and there's a good inspection, it, there won't, won't be any changes down the road. There might be a repair at 15 or 20 years. And that would be the landowner's thing to do and tell Mark they're digging up the road. So the bad installs are the risky thing if you're not careful. And then it's a continual problem. And then I suppose at that point, if somebody was really not respecting good workmanship and really causing highway grief, that we could ask them to take it out of there and find another option. Which, you know, that, that might be the worst case scenario that somebody really doesn't want to do good workmanship in the road to create some problems for the public traveling the public. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, I, I don't see a problem with it. I don't either. Well, we have the yeah. license agreement. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Right. We have a license. You do the agreement. Right. You right. do the agreement because so, part of the 1111. Right. And it all gets recorded and everybody knows what the rules are. Right. So 25 years from now, when there's an issue, there's something you can go back to right. and say, here's what it is. That's why. That's why they're there. That's as long as it's deep enough. I mean, and the, it's, it's recorded as the, part of the permit. Who sets the agreement? Us, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the yeah. town attorney has a draft yeah. agreement, the yeah. landowner reviews it. Yep. Has their attorney, you know, yep. town attorney or, or their attorney reviewed the want, and then it gets signed and notarized and recorded with the 1111 right. payment. Yep. And the rules are set for as long as they use them. And that's right, right. That's, that's right there where you're down around the corner setting up there. It's just like Wallace is going yeah. south. Yeah, but, yeah, Wallace and on Maury Road. The other one is Quiet Lane, which is off Webster. Lane. It's off Webster. Right. It's off Webster Road. Right. Oh, off Webster Road. Yes, yes. The yes, north yes, end yes, of yes. Old Webster Road. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. At Grimes Road. Yes, I'm, I'm there now. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, and and this would be something that we would use a, again. So, if some, there is right. private trails and legal trails all around town. There's also Class Three roads that people want to use more of because some some of the easier properties, to tell you the truth, are are gone. So people have to come up with creative ways, either water and sewer extensions, <laughs> public road, or trying to get a long driveway. And there's all sorts of things with access now, where the easier lots are. Gone. So we get more in requests like like this that we can use these templates that, and, my, and not have to come back to the board and talk about it. We just my feel is if we want to grow from this town, we have to allow some. We sure. have to allow this. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, you have no growth. Yeah. So. Yeah. And this is part of that. So rather than just say no, it's too complicated or too risky, this it's mitigates cool. that. Yeah. You got yeah. the process. Yeah. Great. So, so I guess so I need a motion. Applicants want to say anything. Right. Sounds like a tour of my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Wisdom right there. Wisdom. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so as long as that's okay, that, I just want to get that done, not only for this <clears> one, <throat> but for the subsequent applications and having Brian approved to work with the landowners, we can get it done pretty quickly. Good. I think so that the other issue that Matt would have is how quickly do we stall our how long do we solve people, right? So yeah. the system now that's been approved for the format and Brian can happen pretty quickly with the 1111 and not um, hold up people too long. But because it's the first time, it has held up. You guys, sorry about that. But there's, there's, we, had, we had to work. But you're hard. setting a good precedence for the rest of the people in the years to come. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it's not working. <laughs> oh, gee. Whatever. Yeah. Do we need a motion? Uh, no, because we basically approved it last meeting. Yeah, last time we said we could do it, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. I would just make a note, Brian, and I'll restrict the time of year to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's not something that you understand it should be done. Or like refall. Right. 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 And then also, like, obviously, we, we are dealing with. Like, like all these town trails, obviously we're not adopting the plowing and stuff like that. So. so the way you put that into the agreement? Oh yeah, yeah, the agreement's a draft, so whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We'll go back and forth and get it done. I think because of the climate we live in, it's probably a good idea to have it. Sure yeah, because something done in the fall may not recover yeah. before freeze thaw starts. Yeah. Okay, so that's all I need there, just to make sure everybody's on the same page, so to speak. Yeah. Okay, then the uh, 1111 enforcement fees, and then fees for the audit uh, 
and be close to uh, compliance with 2019-65 and Judkins sap line fee. A quick overview of that, Tom, John, are here for the 233 Depot Street and uh, the permit number is 26? Yeah, it's 26. Not 65. 1926. I think Brian, I think it's right there. Yeah. Yeah. Brian has a copy. Yeah, right. Um, 2019 permit required the removal of a old milk house addition to the old barn. The old, and then the property was renovated without taking down the milk house section. So we're at a point now of deciding what to do about that. Tom uh, had asked for an amendment type process. Uh, the town attorney has said you guys are fine for an enforcement action if you want to make it happen for the permit, uh, which would basically uh, require giving them a warning letter that says your permit requires it to be removed. Your two years passed already, and you have 60 days to remove it, or we'll go to file a claim in, or complaint in civil court or superior court. That's one option. The other option is to hear what Tom has to say tonight and agree that 2019 wasn't quite a good decision and we should now amend it somehow. So that's, that's what I think that's a good summary. Yes. <laughs> so my name is Tom Rosiniak and I represented the landowner of 233 Depot Street, John Adat, which was able to make it to his uh, meeting tonight. <clears throat> and back in 2019, uh, I uh, filed an uh, 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 11 11 access permit for the renovations of the barn that was built back in 1948. Um, <clears throat> the milking parlor, which is the contention of this meeting, is that it was part of the barn and has been. Um, you know, the structure and the foundation of that building. So I issued the permit. I mean, I, I got the permit and with the condition that the milking parlor would be removed along with meeting the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, B71 standards of the driveway access. Um, <clears throat> so at this point, I would like to pass the floor on to John and explain um, the feeling of this condition because of the barn being um, of a historic value and what he's done to it to resurrect and restore the structure to make it a, um, uh, an attractive piece in the neighborhood. Um, so I'll let John um, bring across what he proposals and uh, and see if we can come to an amendment. Okay. Thanks for your time. Uh, great accounting discussion as well. <laughs> great. Were you right there? You're going to be on our finance right. <laughs> balance sheets. Yeah, yeah good. Oh, yeah. You're, so you're my friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have to first apologize for the delay. Uh, we're way late. Um, and uh, I, we kind of feel like there's an audit coming up, which is the closure of our building permit, and we're not prepared because it should have been a while ago. Uh, so there's no excuse for that. We're, we're late. Uh, the permit did call that out, and I do recall seeing it when we were handed the permit by Tom. There's one discrepancy. It calls for the addition for the milk parlor. It refers to the milk parlor as an addition. It's not an addition. It's part of the original structure in 1948. Uh, which was a time uh, either built by or with my uh, grandfather. Uh, well, that barn was in the family until about 1964. We moved out, and uh, at the time it was a dry bridge as well. And there's uh, a couple of things that occurred when it sold in over between 1964 and when I purchased it back. The dry bridge was removed, the elevation of the road changed, and some things changed. But, and chances are maybe even a little bit of the center of the road. Well, the center of the road probably didn't change at all, but it would always been in violation of that. So uh, we kind of got into the groove of just getting everything done. Of course, you can see what it looks like today. Uh, I, would like it, I, would, I would like to tell you to reconsider the requirement 
based on its historic, na its historic nature to the town. Uh, not so much for me. I, mean, I got a great story to tell about it, but really it's the historic piece of the town that you would have to consider. You know, my brother's a magician. He could make that thing six or eight feet shorter and you would never know it was any longer. Although it wouldn't compare to the rest of the barns that were uh, Starline barns from that generation, for some ways. Uh, we've done as much as we could the right way we can. And I think we probably operated much like you operate with your budgets. You do everything right. And when the auditor comes, you don't worry about it. And, uh, count on any mistake being a genuine mistake, which is why we're late on that today. Uh, if there's anything you'd like us to do in lieu of, or that would enable us to retain that full portion of the milk parlor, uh, I would accommodate any request uh, without argument. Uh, there's needs that the highway department surely has. Of course, there's the town uh, bylaws, which have to be abided by for new dwellings. We did not modify the existing structure. I'm sure you folks are all driving by if you can see that. We did add siding and added roof and windows as well. Mm -hmm. that, by the way, thank you yep. for the, uh, <laughs> the design board for the variance. The waiver, yeah, the waiver. Yeah. waiver. The town likes the variance, but we don't have those. What, what are you using the building for? A personal family retreat center. Oh, okay. I've always vacation wondered. Hmm? Eight hundred vacation homes is what it says on the yeah, address. Yeah, yeah. We had a great yeah. family reunion there last weekend. Yeah. Oh, no. You and the rest of the community wanted to do I know. It's, 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 a, yeah. it's a doggy daycare. It's a I know. You've oh, heard yeah. so yeah. many yeah. rumors it's, about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> What's because, in there? Not just this town. Every town around is asked what it is. You should go inside. I know. I'd like to. Yeah, you're all welcome to. Uh, actually, we have to modify that because it was called out as eight. It's actually currently uh, end of it. Uh, because we had, so in the family, there was eight numbers still alive when it made it through, you know, what, two given. And as we were building the, the bedrooms, which are named after the uh, eight siblings that grew up on the farm, oh. we had to give homage to the two that didn't survive. Sure. So we named it. Uh, they got little bedrooms? They do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the favorites got the biggest. Okay, it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> Now, is there somebody there most of the time? No, no. So, 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 oh, Ron so and, and Tom, when this was brought up and it needed to be amended, and the, the talk of was there a reason that that needed to be removed? Right. Other than, um, other than it's in the town right away? Yes. <coughs> Prior to the renovation, it was a frame of a milking parlor, you know, as functional for a milking parlor. The right of way infringement or encumbrance, if you will, is really hard to get out of our right of way for old buildings. Not not for any particular classification like historic, just the fact that if somebody's living and they have a front porch in the village and the right of way goes to the inside the front door, we don't reclaim those things and tell people to move. The only time that you as a municipality get a chance to even talk about it is when there's a change of use. Yeah and a major renovation project happening. And that's what the select board did at that time. They said, this is a time to get that push back from the road. It was eight or 10 feet into the right of way. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, six feet. Six feet into the right of way. They could easily take that off, then do the renovations that they were intending. So it wasn't, it wasn't the fact of anything negative per se, but predicting the future on your limited 50 foot right of ways is something you always want to get back if you can. So, and it would in, in affect the impact of the historic ness of the building. Then I can understand the milk house is part of a barn. Oh yeah, that's another. And, that's and, another discussion. We didn't talk about yeah, that. It was purely yeah. the impact on the road function, yeah. the clear zone, the drainage. You know, just things that you want within your control of the fifty foot right away. It's now a chapel barn. If you want to see Saint Teresa's. You don't have to yeah, St. Teresa's is a chapel. <laughs> so oh, if, yeah. if, I if plowed, I plowed that room for years over there, yeah. and that barn's never been an issue. So it, it, moving forward, do we need to vote on this, or we just need a, a revised one? No, they, they are, I think Tom was asked to submit an amendment application, which would be a formal $50 amendment application with a proposal that you all think would get approved, either take out condition three or two or whatever it was. I don't know if there's any other conditions that were a problem. No, uh, two was the removal. Three was um, 
this B seventy one standard, which we can it's provide a, it's a storm water shall right, we, we can provide adequate evidence of managing I, the storm water or watershed off the road. I, I think that's my my take. I'll I'll leave it at that. I think that if you well, guys, if you guys when the drawbridge that was taken out and yeah. all that fill can, went in mm -hmm. to shape the side slope of, it, of Depot Street. It built up the bank of over four feet from the barn. So everything now is 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 changed in the northern corner of the barn. It's my now, driveway is now down there. Right. <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Everything goes down. Right. 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 Drawing doesn't yeah. show up. <laughs> I would, I would think as long as you have no water problems there. Yeah. Yeah. No, we like, don't have any right. or, 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 you, or you take the responsibility of saying that it's not, you know, any maintenance is needed or something that effect. And sure. I, left, I went down the other night when it was raining. Yeah. I was down there. Right. But, but, but I don't want, I don't want similar issues as what we just had earlier. You know, if, if it does wash and it there washes in your in your house, right now. and all of a sudden it says it's up against our building, come get it. Well, I think, I think you guys are on the right track. So whenever there's a need for the town like public transportation bikes shoulder drainage utilities all the things you use your right away for and there's an encumbrance of it <coughs> even for even ledge on somebody's property you know if they don't have sight line the condition is push that ledge back for sight line you know there's always a something that comes up with 11 permits culvert no culvert etc this one in particular I don't think there was a sight line issue from the proposed driveway looking towards the mill house. So, I mean, those are the kind of the obvious right. ones. This one was a purely a chance for an older building to be pushed back and get that right of way back for the town's public use. That's where the condition came from. The mitigation of that, because there's plenty of other structures, there's, there's Mr. Morin up on North Hyde Park Road. It's right on the edge of the road that he right. doesn't want to move that thing, but he hasn't proposed any renovation yet either. That's almost that's an obvious safety issue. So right. that he did renovate and try to stabilize that particular structure. You renovated and you're done with renovations and investment, I would guess, at this point. So there's really not that that chance of not having that's it invested safety. is gone, right? Right. So Tom, I think to address the only other concern that really remains, which one you can't predict. You can't predict what the demand on that depot street is going to be. That's a federal aid highway that connects Morristown and, and really Eden. It's on maps as an alternate route if Morrisville's roundabout kind of goes. That's the alternate route for all that Morristown traffic is Depot Street. Over the next hundred years, we probably still want to add a lane. The lane issue is what you really want to think about when you're trying to get as much of your 50 foot right of way clear as possible. My, Nobody my, here. My, my feel is they're not the only one in the right of way on that lane on that road. Well, and you're not oh, for, for that yeah, right. for that sort of, if you will, little bit of space that you're I, not. I, I do this. I do this for a living. I, I, know, I deal with this. Yeah. I think it looks good. They've yeah. done a good job of repairing yeah. it. We want it. So the site plan that Tom, the secondary, the only issue I can think of right now is the drainage off right. the road and what impact that has. So right now we don't have. It probably should have been done as part of the dry bridge removal. Is it an assessment of the stormwater drainage coming off the road and impacting the barn? Well, that, that was that, a change. That's not number three. That's why I was saying if they take liability of that, saying right. that you know they are going to own the right. storm water in the then right we come, away. Then we come full circle to the license agreement, which deals with that kind of stuff. Right. right. So oh, that was the one in, in, the order, right, in order to use the private private use in a public road, that we can have a license agreement right. that deals with the stormwater right. issues. Perfect. So we've, yeah. So we're Just not going to be caught. Yeah. Like we're not, no, we get to use it again, right? Yeah. He's already produced an engineer drawing. Yeah, I was great. Yeah, I, yeah. I can come up with many different proposals on how. I, we I don't think you need to draft anything. anything. All you got to do is just take the ownership of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. On this, it's, it's sort of like the like the licenses yeah. that we just did. Yeah. yeah. And right, we'll <laughs> That's my field. I got three to do now. Okay. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But we found something new. Yeah, um, exactly. First, we need an amendment application, I yep. think, because we have to get rid of those conditions. Yeah. Yeah. And then we put a new condition in, which says license agreement must be recorded with a new 11 letter. Perfect. Okay. And you got to name one building, that one bedroom after me. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, the milking parlor. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's the tag. I grew up. I did. 
did grow up in a milking yeah. parlor. <laughs> license agreement. Okay. Okay. Just like the other two that we're going to do. And a $50 TTH. <laughs> <laughs> Not the 165 for new construction. Yeah. Okay, so you need a motion? No, we'll actually we'll just do it. We'll kick it back to Brian's authority on the license. Gotcha. Thank you for restoring that and making it so yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's it's so lovely. Nice. It's really nice to meet the person that did that because Yeah, that's actually my, my brother. Oh, okay. Uh, well, so we same family. Yeah. yeah, same family. Yeah. Oh, him and I were there. So I yeah. That's yeah. great. Over 200 people. Yeah. Yeah, this last weekend was great. Uh, oh, by the way, that's all family members. Wow. Yeah. Well, not all. Not all. all. We, won't, <laughs> we won't hold it against you. Yeah. No, 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 that's why. Yeah, but that oh, sand looked like you wouldn't even know we had steam out because there's so much sand on the top of it that's been tracked in our driveway from that road. I know, too. It's all sand down there. I know. The new ammo pits down there, it's all sand down there. I'm going to have to put it on my road. I have to do something. I bet. I have to get it up. I got to get it up above the field. I couldn't make the rest. down the road now after it rained and it slides. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, in there. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, thank guys. you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank thank guys. Thank you. Later, Dave. <laughs> Just before the power plant, wages for office cleaner, vacancy, to yep. to advertise and vacancy increase. And the 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 quit. Quit. Okay. Yes, it's a resignation yeah. and. Um, we're kind of stuck in the, in the, I think it's going to be a classic condition for towns. You have part-time people that are finding other things to do and you have basically contracted services. Thank you, people. Thank you. You know, business, business level arrangements that you have to do now to get, yep. and she was doing very limited hours per week. So the choice was, we have two choices. One, we could come up with a higher hourly. Which she was getting sixteen dollars an hour, and that just wasn't of interest. Not the gas money for <laughs> yes. And um, I talked to Kim briefly about it, and it's you know you can talk to people at thirty to forty dollars an hour to come in and do cleaning, to do exactly what they need to do, and have a professional. Yeah. The library pays one hundred and seventy-five a week to have their three floors cleaned, mm -hmm. and we were paying almost nothing. But you can see there. There's needs around the building right. and, and bathrooms get a little stale around here and that kind of stuff. So we didn't really know, Kim, Kim and I kind of batted it around and we don't know if somebody in the town employment now would, 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 would that was already employed would do it as an okay. add-on job. Oh, yeah. I'm, I was riding the rail trail today yeah. and when you come towards the barn from... Morseville side? No, Brother uh, Johnson. Johnson. Those, those... Bushes, those. Uh, the mountain needs to be cut so you can see. Yeah, it's, you can't see. You, we had to get halfway out on the road before. Uh, I, I drive it every day with my bike, and so uh, okay. yeah, I'm aware of it. And, so and I just just thank you. No, before somebody gets hurt. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Nora would have been out there, but we waited for parts to. I really don't want to chop that up too much either. So. Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah, you got to check all that stuff in, right? That was, that's no, you gotta lay it down pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the question. I, you know, I, I didn't want to say, okay, we're gonna go 16 to 30, right. two hours a week on an employee without talking to you. And I didn't want to go to 175 a week or maybe 100 less a building. What's it in, what's it in it? A sweep and mop the floors? Well, we have a list on the back of the timesheet is a checklist, just like you okay. say, like McDonald's, whatever. Yeah, you yeah, right. you know, this weekly, this bi weekly, this monthly, annually, clean the rugs here. Yep. If the contractor that would come in would have all that equipment to do everything we need, an employee would probably have to rent a steam cleaner to do the rugs, right. and they might not. Um, uh, it's a supervisory thing, basically. So you end up with 
okay, how'd they do? What did they miss? And it's kind of the contractors that I think Amy Olson is pretty happy with over yeah. home maintenance, I think you see on the invoicing. Um, she's pretty happy with the work they do. We call them and say, how much for this place once a weekend? Because we don't have a high use. It's not a dirty place. So it's not a high use. The bathrooms get used by the public and the public goes into that little entry area. We've been doing this like quarterly. Yeah. They'll come down and kind of spruce it up a little bit, but the upstairs needs a lot more attention. So I don't know if anybody had a preference or some, some idea to yeah. fill it in. I mean, there's lots of con cleaning contractors out there for sure. You know, but. Yeah, and there's lots of individuals and there's companies. Yeah, I yes, I know some individuals and. I ain't getting into it. Bro. I, I was going to say. No, I ain't getting into it. <laughs> no problem. Okay. <laughs> She was actually the one on my mind. <laughs> you, call her. you didn't realize it's not just the, you know, text. It's not just okay. the highway that you're liaison for. It's for the uh, cleaning of this building. Right. Too. So I, I don't know if it was actually when formal it, until when this it's, moment. When it's, when it's that close, I'll it's do not it. me. Okay. <laughs> it's not me. You text her all the time, so. Okay. You can ask her. Yeah. See what she turns in. Yeah. yeah, maybe we just get some price. Well, last I, I think last time we took out like a front porch. What's our budget for the year? What are we spending a year right now at 16 bucks an hour? Nothing. Right. Right. But so being if you a budget actually, number that's in your budget, I don't, I don't know when that was. It's been reduced. Like anything, it's going to need to go up, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> <Think of that. coughs> I'm sorry. Right. It's yeah. about three times that. If she, yeah. Can't get all of them. Yeah, like, no one can. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, McDonald's isn't paying sixteen dollars an hour. Oh, well, Mark French just told me you know, yeah, fifteen hundred. They're paying thirty dollars an hour for mowing grass, and they give you a pickup to take you home. We have fifteen hundred if you went to <laughs> even. We're gonna go mowing grass. Fifty dollars oh, a week. <laughs> it's still twenty five hundred. Right. Yeah. If nobody will do it for under seventy five a week, you're at you know four thousand. You know, just mm -hmm. compared to your fifteen hundred. Jesse will take care of it. Yeah, I know a couple of people. Fifteen hundred. So yeah, we can put a front porch for them out so it's fair. Oh I, right. But but the face to face is what usually gets people to. Yeah, it is to apply. But to yeah. cover the public interest. Sure. Is, I think let's you should, do that. Yeah, I think we post it on the front porch yeah. forum and still. Do our own due diligence. Yeah. Like to to it's well. probably two to four yeah. hours a week yeah. to, I was just gonna ask to do that. the building. Yeah. Uh, sure. She's local. And if we're doing twenty dollars an hour, sure. Sure. it seems to make it going rate right, almost like the old minimum wage. Um, yeah, and could so, they do it at night or weekends, or would you prefer like if they did it like every Wednesday or every Tuesday? Or it used to be done every weekend. Yeah, every weekends, weekends are fine. Yeah. Or could it be a weeknight? Or if it was like every well, week? Or it's the uh, there's conflicts with this room on oh, Monday through Thursday. Right. True. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday would be ideal. Got it. Got it. Is there a Google Docs for like the for agenda? Is there the building? Google Docs. Like does this have like 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 for us we have Google Docs for like like the fields when we do our field scheduling. Google Docs. If you want to see when this room is going to be. Oh, right. oh they, they I know. I was calendar. like, what are you they talking about? They have a paper about? calendar upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what he was saying. You can have like a, like a Google agenda. Like yeah, a, no. It's, oh, it's, calendar. It's managed by the clerk's office and there's this paper calendar and it says reserve, reserve, reserve. Oh, okay. So it's all hit or miss. We should never put that online. Some people have regular items, but otherwise it's hit or miss. We don't exactly know who's going to be here okay. Monday through Thursday. But if they checked ahead, you know, they if they had Tuesday night off and called Krista and it's open, right? Exactly, yeah. So for their week to be clean, I don't think we're not that hardcore. We just need somebody here regular, exactly, on a, any day of the week, once a week, right? Day. As long as it's consistent. Yeah, and they get the baseboards and the spider webs and the bathroom area spruced up. Okay. So, but I, you know, just for fairness, we do front sure. porch form posting. You know, two to four hours a week. Yep. At, I think no, you're 20 bucks an hour? I, I think you're going to have to do 25. I don't, I don't know if you're going to get much. Price price of gas, you don't know if you get people to drive here. Is it? Yeah, but that opens it up to an employee potentially that says, hey, I'll do that because I can use an extra 50 bucks a week or yeah. 75 bucks a week. 
Or the cleaning company that says, I'll do it for 30 bucks for some reason. I don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> but at least you have information. Yeah. Just, I guess, yeah, I can clean for one month and make double my, my, yeah. sit my, sell, my court payment for the year. <laughs> Uh, hundred thousand comedians at work. <laughs> we got one right here. All right. All so right. there's no vote needed. That's just we're just gonna put it. No, out. we're just gonna All put right. it out, and eventually we'll have something back at you. That's let's go. That's what we found. On to the next one. Let's go. You think I put it on front porch four? Yeah, yeah front porch four. I'm at uh, well, chastity is twenty five yeah. for two to four hours a week. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Okay. Um, and FY 2023 wage adjustment effective pay period. Oh, yeah, the assistant clerk here. Yeah. Safe. So, um, there's been talk about uh, um, getting Krista uh, up to what other people are making, and um, Kim has. Um, done some research on what everybody else is making in the area for the same job and uh, she's below that and so she was proposing um, she's currently making 1972 4% increase which would be 78 uh, cents an hour increase um, bring up to $20.50 and then again um, See, this is saying instead of one a dollar, out a dollar, and then um, so we bring it up on one one twenty three at fifty cents. So twenty two dollars is what we're trying to. Uh, that's what the others are making, and uh, um, try to get her up there to retain twenty two. Yeah, I think that's a fair. What well, does that. That. for seven one for for the new fiscal year? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So she can go from 1972 to 22? Yes. Has she requested the raise or this is something that just... This is, uh, Kim approached me and uh, Kim's on one. Anything you want to mention about that, Kim? So I did reach out to other clerks in the county, like Brian said, and um, they've indicated that their assistants are all making between like, tw there was one person who's making 19, but she was just hired, like I think it was in December or January. Um, but everybody was in the, the 20 to, well, one and one assistant was at 29 an hour. Um, and I think that, I think that for what she does, the value that she brings to my office and to her position, the job that she does in such a thorough manner, I think she deserves more than a cost of living. I think she deserves a merit increase based on her excellent overall performance. And she does, she does. Every time I've gone in there, she's always uh, uh, very well at greeting you and, uh, and been able to answer any questions I have. Yeah. Does she want to clean? Yeah. <laughs> For extra? Does she want to do milk? <laughs> Well, when Ron and I talked about it, she didn't pipe up a volunteer on that one. <laughs> I don't blame her. Run right away, I think. I don't blame her. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm fine with it. And budget-wise, we're we're good, right? Yeah. I mean, over well, overall, we had budgeted, <laughs> uh, for example, forty hours for uh, Jennifer. She's in the thirty-two to thirty-five. Oh, okay. I think she's going to settle into the thirty-two, thirty-five. Yeah. I don't see it going the other way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Deborah's in the fifty to sixty because she was doing a lot of stuff and yeah. trying to clean up and get the office in order, which actually worked because right. Jennifer was able to settle into something quicker. Yeah. So I think going from a management of that money, there's money in there to cover that. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a small auxiliary line which we have for extra money for extra Great. adjustments that are needed. So it's not gonna. Great. It's not going to bust the budget, so to speak. Great. Yeah. Um, it's a five thousand dollar yearly increase on that, uh, essentially. Some of it was planned, so she had seventy eight cents planned anyway right. in the budget. In the budget. So right. You're talking about the the difference is what's not planned. The dollar. dollar yeah, the four percent was the cost of living. Well, that was our, yeah. We'd yeah, already planned yeah, to do yeah, that. that. Yeah. All that. Yeah. <laughs> She's forty hours a week. Yeah. Yeah, she opens. I think she opens and yeah. closes now, and she's all settled and good.
good support for Kim. And, and she's trained to the point that uh, if Kim has to step out, she's she can enter just about anything that uh, comes up. So, and she's been helping finance too, right? She's been kind of she's going to get cross trained a little bit. Yeah, there. part of our part of our next phase is the team A B thing. So yeah, that, so you know everybody has a part to play in all the different procedures that well, Brian and everybody oh. talked about before. Yeah. But. Just to make it clear, what I'm asking for is based on, like Ron said, a portion of it is already like in the budget, that 4%. Yeah, so yeah. The extra that I'm asking for is just to bring her up to what I feel she's worth as an employee for what she provides to the town right now. Um, she has gone above and beyond for the finance department. When I cleaned out that finance department after um, Deborah left, Krista was right there with me, helping me out. And she completely took over one full project of going through all the W-9s and certificate of insurances and making sure the vendor list was updated. And, you know, she took that project on because she saw what a mess it was. I didn't have to ask her. She yeah. just did it. You know, she's that kind of an employee. If she finds herself with 10 minutes of free time, she's going to go find something. She's not going to sit around and kill time. When I talk about, or when somebody, Ron, talks about a plan A, B payroll, if hypothetically Krista were to take on you know, the payroll backup, I would anticipate and expect that she'd get extra pay if that were to happen. Doesn't she have, don't we have her for certain hours a week? Yeah. No. Okay. She's 40 <laughs> hours for the clerk. I thought we had her for eight hours. Was, uh, well, the town is paying for and not... The clerk's budget is not paying for all of her time. She's 40 hours for the clerk. Okay. If you, if you, you went, can look we at the budget, through, right? We I was going to say, I feel like we went to 32 and 8. I thought when we had, yeah, I thought it was 32 and 8. Oh, well, it's, it started with the evaluation of the money and having money available within and to support the listers and we were talking about how to do somebody that at the front desk because we knew the contractor for the town assessor wasn't going to be there like listers might be so that we were hoping that somebody at the front desk could get those public requests processed a little bit at the beginning gotcha. and not say call the assessor right off the top of the head you know but be able to get certain things and i think kim and krista both help people on things that might have been done by the listers. So it's not that it's zero per se, uh, because I don't, you know, it's it being good customer service is right. what they do now. So if somebody wants one copy of a property card, they, they can point the direction or they can help somebody that needs help and that person gets served. Gotcha. So there isn't quite a bright line issue. It's more like Kim's preservation of the 40 hour concept is, is supported by the letter of hire, which Kim provided to Krista. And Kim and Krista work with us as things develop day to day, but there's no dedicated job duty Got it. Like, okay. like being um, sort of backup for payroll if if Jennifer's gone for a week. That's not established at all. At oh, okay. Okay. But Kim and Krista do help with the back end of payroll because they make the money move. Right. And Kim reviews the payroll register before she has to sign any checks. So there's a, there's a relationship there that happens anyway. Sure. But I think it's the dedicated thing where Krista doesn't have a choice. <laughs> right. That's the, that's the issue I think Kim is raising is. Gotcha. Correct. Okay. okay. So it's the, it's the choice versus the help. Got it. Okay. And, work, and working together. And there's, okay. there is a bright line with that because if the select board said, uh, by the way, Jennifer is going to be gone for three weeks and we need Krista to jump in on the payroll duties that she was doing, that is a total change. Different gotcha. thing. And you could do that as a one time. Sure. Yeah. Or you can do it as a normal base adjustment to know that Krista is fully trained and ready to slide in. Okay. That's, we haven't gotten there yet, but that's Got the it. concept. Okay, no, thank you. That now, makes complete and, sense. And right, and then the budget question originally was, there was numbers thrown around 32 and eight, 36 and four, and how all that discussion, but that was before the letter of hire. Gotcha, okay. So the money came from different pots, if you will. Yeah. But the letter of hire really set the duties and pay to, to Kim. Okay, Kim and Crystal, okay. And then Kim's been open to work with us. Right. I think just I think just talking about it is good. 
you know, and just have that on the table that yeah. it's working okay together. And we, if we see something that morphs into a job description change or a must do duty, then the board should be talking about sure. that and, and Krista. So, uh, you know, I'm thinking of my own position with zoning. Krista seems to like zoning for some reason. Yeah. Not everybody does, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I think she likes the service part of it. Yeah. And she doesn't like to see non-service. Yeah. So would she be able to be, you know, compensated, but sure. but trained in the initial application phase so that no matter who walks through the front door, she can help. She can get to step two yeah. and then yeah. boot it out yeah. to the get zoning started, administrator. Right. Sure. So the person gets served, they generally know what the process is, and the person doesn't have to come back or just drop something off or email it. Yeah. So that's something I was thinking about for that, because she does it sort of already. People yeah. come in already and yeah. they want it. Yeah. Is that right, Kim? They, they, she's already on the front line a little bit. As a customer, you know, on a scale of one to ten for customer service, she is no doubt a twenty. Like, <laughs> she will bend backwards for anybody who calls, anybody who walks in, and there are times when she doesn't have time to dive into the question to help them because it's tax day or you know whatever, and she'll boot it to Ron. But there are times when she does have the time and. You know, she'll do a little digging and try and figure it out and ask some questions and be like, oh, you know, and by that time, Ron probably has dealt with it. But she likes to learn. She likes to know and she wants to be able to help people to a certain level that she can where she is. And, you know, and that's part of what I say. She is an exceptional employee and coworker, and I would be nowhere without her. Like, I don't know what I would do without her. She's that good. So we need a, a motion. motion. Mm -hmm. And the effective date, you know, July 1, for example. Yep. Two and B, if you want to do that, you would say it encompasses the 4% and the extra that, well, Kim wrote it down, right? Yeah. So I make a motion to give Krista her planned budgeted 4% raise plus another increase of $1.50, bringing her to $22 an hour effective July 1. 2022. Any discussion? All in favor, seeing five for saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstaining? Raise hand. Thank you. Sure thing. Okay. And then the FY 2023 assignment from FY 22. Unspent funds, fire department, truck repairs. Uh, we skipped one, I think. Did I? I think so. Where? Wage adjustments. Or maybe I'm like this. Dogs. Or maybe change. Wage adjustments 23. Is that on here? Yeah. Item wage. number seven. No, we just did Krista. Yeah. This is the town employees, all of them. Oh. CFY 23 wage adjustments effective yeah. today. Or, yeah. Oh, so I thought that's what this was. No, no, this is a special request from Kim that you just dealt with. So this this one, this other item is the annual town wide wage adjustments okay. that are effective July one for right. everybody else. Uh, Krista's uh, had a special request. Office cleaner was a was a was question. The, right. So I pulled those out separate because I knew they'd take more discussion. This one is um, a spreadsheet basically that'll be presented to you at the twenty eighth meeting. And it'll list all the pay that's going to be effective July 1 with your um, needing a vote on everybody collectively. And that's what um, Jennifer would use to make the adjustments within the payroll system. Okay. So we, haven't say, done, we haven't done you, that. You yet. say that, but is that including the contract, the union contract? Yes. It yes. says right it says 3 union. for union, 4% yes. for our regular employees. But there's no vote needed on that tonight, right? No, no. I was letting you know that there's a couple oddities this year, which I just want, <laughs> yeah. to, want you to be aware of because it's on the street. Uh, one is the um, pay increases for municipal employees generally are, are increasing quite a bit more than we have in our budget. So there may be some feedback as the July 1 adjustments get known because everybody's doing pretty much at the same time. So we're doing the three and four, three by contract. Don't have to talk about that, that's automatic. The 4% is a budget number just like Krista's was a budget number that you could adjust if you want to do some town-wide issue due to inflation and all that stuff. 
no way that I had any way to start that practically with presenting anything. But just so that you know, it's out there. Underhill is eight. Uh, Morristown is double digits. Um, that kind of stuff is going on for July 1st. Indicator for budget time, basically. But maybe not this July, but definitely for budget time, there's going to be a lot of, especially if we get into January and the inflation rate is still bumps around 8%. It's going to be really hard to give people another 3 or 4% yeah. next July. Yeah. So just something to think about, and I'm not making recommendations, I'm just calling it out. That's why I was on there. Coming into a recession. Sounds like it. For sure. Yeah. So, sorry, that was, I just want to make sure that was on the table. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I know it's not public comment time or questions, but I'm curious about the highway department. I can't drop the ball. How much are an uh, entry level highway person making? 17, 18, somewhere in there. I mean, we're, we just barely got our guys up near 20 with some pay adjustments last year because they were down in 17, 18 for the season. That, that's not really counting competitive. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Now they're looking, the you know, salary. a year later, a lot of those uh, laborers are being advertised in the paper with huge right. sign on bonuses to come to your town, you know, $30 an hour for somewhat skilled labor with licenses and things. Yeah, yeah. You know, twenty dollars an hour to start for a lot of labor jobs anyway. Thirty dollars an hour, Mark said the other night to me. Thirty dollars an hour to mow grass, and they give you a pickup to kill. Yeah. So anyway, we're it's getting really, to that. it's a problem. It's yeah. a problem that we're going to have to be dealing well, with. Well, the way the market's going, quickly. I may be looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> right. Me too. So anyway, that's what I told my wife. But well, we got everybody above twenty, but still the pressure yeah. is pushing. I can mow. Because all the other ent entities are yes. putting yeah. their stuff up. We have 100 employees and I don't have a guy under 20. What? We have 100 employees and I don't have a guy under 20. And that's what I do for work. Yeah. That's discrimination. I don't have a, a guy or a girl. <laughs> <laughs> you have not an employee under 20. Yeah, no. Okay, moving along. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, God. I think I'm the youngest one. So the unspent funds, what are we going to do with them? What did you say? <laughs> you don't spend funds. Ryan is here to explain. Uh, where, where, did you, where did you go in there? Are you awake over there, Ryan? See, I don't know if mine is the same as yours. I just printed it yeah. out, but there, there wasn't anything like you said. Yeah, now, on he, now he's on the fire department on the spend fund. The long said we should have a discussion about before the end of the month. Let me see your agenda for that. Right. I, I know. I'm, I I'm, on, I'm on unlicensed dogs. Me too. It. I know. I know. No, no, this, no, no, you this, this is every, no, you no, this is seven, seven, right, no, no, seven on seven. See, there's the that wage. Was wage adjustments. Okay, and the and second the line of that is unspent funds, fire department. Yeah, I don't have that on mine. I don't either. Huh. I do. I do. <laughs> Where are you guys getting your stuff from? Right on the agendas on the online. That's what I'm on. Well, that's where yeah. I took it from. So it's on your yours is there. You're, you have you have the right one. Oh, it's on the agenda. It's on the agenda. Okay, I'm with you. So what, okay. is that, what is that one? I was looking at those details. Notes. Oh. I was looking at the notes. notes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Agenda is better. Yeah. yeah. Agenda is what Brian's following. Jeez, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, we were reading the agenda items and notes, okay, I see. Nice. Jeez, I thought financial reports was the hard part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not. Keeping track of the agenda is way more complicated. <laughs> Yeah, apparently the last couple you, you and I read the same thing. I, I, last week I was like, Brian goes all over the place. I, I'm not following you. <laughs> Sorry. Must young be, folk, you know. Must be really late. <laughs> it is late. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's late. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I already Fire brought apartment. it up once or twice already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let Brian, Brian, Brian can explain. Brian, you Brian can explain. Can explain. Yeah. Okay. Well, for one, we got... So money left over in our truck maintenance. We got $6,900 still, but what we want to do is carry some of that over because we still got a fire truck that's yeah. down at Charlie Boys waiting for fire stick. We have no idea when we do it. Or how much? The repair over. The, the estimate is about 2500 To fix the fire truck? Is that what it was? Right. Yeah. Now, let's say you the next year's budget and, oh, wait, now we got a $5,000 repair bill that was from last, last year. year. Right. Yeah. And it would have been fixed by now if normal circumstances. Yeah, yeah. What, right. What's wrong with it? Uh, transmission cooling. Oh, transmission cooling. You can't get one. So 
What's the what's the engine, engine for a month and a half? What's the engine number? Is engine two? Two. E two? Or yeah. That's the call sign is E two. Yeah. Just like what were you last week? Well, well, I think we should huh? or were you last week? So we're gonna carry over the sixty nine hundred? That's the it'll be an emotion. Like that's what you want. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. They give us an estimate of forty five hundred. Well, I don't think that could be five thousand and buck up. Okay. And the other thing I was when she was talking about carrying over was that our salary line is done because our salary is in the next budget. Correct? Yeah, there's two two deductions from salary already. So regardless of how the Pardon? accounting people account for it, there will be two deductions. In, in they, they will get paid in July. They, they've been called yeah. out less, so there's money in salary. Uh, That's so right now we get sixty seven hundred dollars. Okay. Salary. In salary. That's right. Remaining. That's right. Yeah. That we're not going to spend it because we're all done with that. But Dr. Ron says we really ought to carry some money over for fuel. Yeah. Yeah. Because when we did our budget, we were expecting six, seven dollar fuel prices. Right. So what's going to happen next? This coming winter. Right. When you have calls, you're going to we're going to overspend. That's the heating. wood part. Yeah. You know, just the heating. So you're going to overspend your budget. Yeah. So I just thought it wrong. Like, really, I carry some money over for that because. Yep. Who knows where it's going to be? They have a water bill now too, right? Did you guys? That's, 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 that's in the budget. budget. We yeah. added that. Yeah, not the first year, but yeah. <laughs> so those are just a couple of things that we wanted to carry over. Yeah. And by the way, those are perfect assignment things. So when Wendy was talking about the different ways that fund balances, yeah, at the end of the yep. year's report out, one of those was assigned. Use it conservatively for projects that are ongoing, and which is repair, and within some cost and time frame. So the cost is relatively known. And they know it's going to happen as soon as the park comes in. Yeah, the perfect checks all the boxes. Yeah, you want it on the and the gas and the gas is another. You know, we have it this year. Let's let's book it, so to speak, and have that reserved instead of it going to the undersigned. Yeah. Once it goes into the undersigned, you can still use it for emergency purposes, but you're really supposed to ask voter approval mm -hmm. uh, at town meeting day to access those funds. Gotcha. So if you assign it, you're doing it properly before June 30. Okay. And for the right reason. I think we can have better numbers on the 28th. Right? I mean. Right, so if you were to make a motion tonight to give Brian some clearness that it's approved, I would say condition on Jennifer confirming the, the money numbers. Still numbers right. right, I think we'll have more of a solid number. And the truck might be done. The part might come in. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> so you, Doubtful. Yeah, but. you wouldn't assign money in May, but you would assign it the last meeting in June, for example. Just to. Yeah. Right. Sometimes you need a motion. Okay. I'll make a motion. We'll approve more money to carry over that Ryan requested. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 So, uh, we can all come in at the end of the month and just we can kind of narrow the numbers. Yeah. Should I abstain? I don't I have to? So. Okay, then I. <laughs> it's a fire department, it's not your partner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a general fire department. Yeah. General fire department. Yeah, I think that's the that's the trigger. Okay, moving right along. Um, this may not be on that on your. <laughs> I got unlicensed dogs. That's what I got. I'm reading. 2023 <laughs> annual unlicensed dog warrant. That's always uh, on the list too. Who will pursue the licensing with no count ACO? That's right. So I'm the unofficial acting Owen? ACO. Yeah. I am because yeah. I'm on the sheriff's list to yeah. call me all weekend with lost dog and barking dog complaints. Oh, we appreciate it. Do people call? <laughs> I don't. Do I'm you right get a there with you. Do you get a lot of them? Oh, your eyes are wide open. You do? I can. I, can, I If I could do animal control, like code enforcement, like full time, it'd be kind of an enjoyable job for me. I uh, think. Yeah. Katie, really? Katie has said that about eating. Yeah, Katie, I want. I told Katie we should hire her for Does she like park. it? Does she likes it up there? Because she loves dogs. But like, she, then she sometimes that doesn't mix with the human trait. But, but then she ends up with like <laughs> getting cows at her house. <laughs> she rescued a cow. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, without the ACO person who normally would track down the unlicensed dogs, we only have a handful of them because nobody's licensing their dogs. The select board made a decision during COVID to waive fees 
and not enforce and everybody got out of the loop. We went from close to 600 potential dog <laughs> needing to be licensed to uh, a couple hundred wow. with maybe 50 unlicensed because your pool, it's like the unemployment rate. Nobody's working, so the employment rate goes down. The same thing happened with dogs. The dogs aren't being licensed, so the dog license you know, rate goes up because- It won't go up until it gets enforced. Right, so without enforcement, we had a problem. We do, we everything went back to normal, license, rabies, you know, notices that Kim does. All that stuff is back to normal, except people just kind of got out of the practice of it, I think, yeah. a little bit. So the suggestion was to, you know, you have a dog warrant in front of you. Brian has it somewhere. Yeah. And I think they handed it to you. You did, and then it went down. Down the road a little. Yeah. That might be That's it. Okay. So on that, on that list in the warrant process is that you're giving authority to the enforcement officials, which generally is the ACO or Sheriff's Department, to knock on doors and try to get these dogs back into compliance. We don't have anybody doing that. We also don't have anybody calling and supervising the unlicensed, unregistered, unknown dogs, which is probably 200 of them out there that people have gotten out of the practice. Does this have to be a town resident? Dog, the dog has to be kept in no, Hyde Park. No, ACO. Does that no. ACO have to? No. no. Okay. Is it, a, is it a yearly budget? Oh, yeah. We had, we yeah, had $6,000 of labor it. in there. I bet she'd do it. I asked her about it a while ago, and she said no, but she now that she's involved in Eden, maybe she would. Because I instantly thought of her. Yeah. What is the okay. It's got to be 20 bucks an hour. Oh, it's hourly. It's, so for any yeah. time. And mileage. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. And we probably could match what Eden's doing, but I don't, we, haven't, we haven't tested the market on that. Yeah, exactly. But it was an hourly plus mileage. Check again. Their own schedule, say. you know, minimum calls were like minimum 15 minutes, just to be fair. Yeah. But they get called 24 7, seven days a week. Sheriff's Department is reluctant to take any animal calls unless there's bodily injury type sure. stuff. Sure. So that's what the AC role, role was. The only thing I'm able to do is try to mediate, mediate or educate people. So that's my role. We have a dog roaming issue up on Tinney Hill. Yeah. We'll try to hunt down the owner, find out where the dogs live, write them an informational memo with a copy of the ordinance. And, you know, 70% of the time people are like, oh, yeah, geez. 30% of the time we don't have an answer, you know. Yeah. So I don't know. That's word of mouth, you know, or I can take another front porch forum and put it out there and see if anybody responds. But. Without it, we're, we're losing ground, I think, because, yeah. of the, the, because of the COVID break. There's, we need to get better on that. Just statutory responsibility. Sure. But, yeah. So if anybody has any ideas, that's why I put the question mark on the agenda. It's like, what do we, what do, we do? Well, Nobody. We had a couple of rabbit animals option that we spoke to. No, we're going to use a drone podcast. <laughs> <laughs> See a drone. We have to report that so to our insurance company if we have one. Do you know that? That's on one of the questionnaires on my renewal. Really? Do, does the town own a drone? Must be a liability coverage. Yeah, privacy. Yeah. 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 So there's a front porch forum answer. Is that basically front porch forum? Right. Yeah. Everybody agrees. We're going to post it on the front porch forum. We'll start there and see what happens. Sure. We'll check with your buddies. And, we'll get a follow right. just and, and then word of, word of mouth too would help yeah. to, if you know of anybody that might be interested. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the right. jacket. I think you have to take a motion to approve the warrant though and sign it. Where I sign. Yeah, we sign that. Yeah, I just need a motion okay. to approve. Okay. Sign it. Anybody move? I make a motion to approve the dog warrant. Yeah, <laughs> license yeah. dog warrant. License dog warrant. <laughs> warrant. Right. I'll That's, second. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining. Yes, have. Good. And then the uh, minutes. Oh, they look good. Resets. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from 426 22, 510 22, and 524 22. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? Again, the ayes have it. Okay, that was an easy one. Uh, other business from, from, from the meeting minutes from that, the only thing that uh, have we gotten any progress on that that property that no 
No, the one that had the, the uh, what was it, Green View, whatever it was. Green River Woods? Yeah. Lot one? Yes. Yeah, they got through their DRV hearing. They did. Mm -hmm. so they need a decision, final decision written up to deal with as a combined permit. They needed subdivision house, conditional use and house permit together for construction. So they should be, should be good, but yeah. permit's not final yet. Yeah. And they aren't even sure if they build in there with the cost of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't but that. they'll be ready. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's the important yeah. part. And yeah. Okay, do we want to discuss the uh, draft for Prospect Street stormwater maintenance? Yeah, it's just a really quick update on Prospect Street. Uh, the select board approved that project, which is subsurface stormwater uh, installation at the, in the loop at the end of the road. Uh, Lomoyle County Conservation District approved almost 50,000, which is above that 60% number that the yeah. board wanted to see. So we got that money finally from that project. And the last step of the grant is a requirement for maintenance. It's a written MOU between, in this case, there's no private landowner. So it may be the town and LCCD and they take some responsibilities. We take some, um, we don't know yet if the homeowners would form any kind of legal group that we could have them sign. And we don't want, you know, 12 different parties signing. So we kind of got stuck there. We may not have the homeowners involved unless it's sort of like on a volunteer basis, the homeowners may do this versus the requirements of the MOU, MOU which would be the town and the uh, conservation district. That's the long-term mm -hmm. thing. So that draft will be back to you when Peter Danforth can get it to us. We just haven't seen it yet. That's the basic, busy. yeah, it's a basic story. Yeah, he's busy, very busy this time of year. Uh, let's see, need to set tax rate on June 28th. So, yeah, will the tax rate? Yeah, it's a waiting game at this point. Yeah. Kim is waiting for the school's numbers for FY23. When that state school number comes, we can figure out the two other parts. The third part we can figure out anytime, which is the town rate. We can't figure out the school rate, obviously, or the local agreement tax. Those three things get combined into the rate. So whenever they come in, if they come in on the 27th or even the 28th, we could probably have it as an article or agenda item. Okay. If it doesn't, um, probably right after July 4th, we'll have a special meeting. Special meeting. Okay. Yeah. So, so everybody's aware of it. Yeah. Okay. Project it in the future. And possible executive session, land acquisition, acquisition discussion, read 25 acres of the last parcel. VSA three one three eight two and the town orders. I need a motion. I forgot to put that on the agenda. That is not on the agenda, but I need a motion. <laughs> okay. You guys are killing me. The town orders were here somewhere. We yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're all down there. there. Yeah, and we do have a question, so we can yeah, ask that well, question on the hearing. It was for um, uh, Jason. Jason Wells. It was some sort of hearing. Uh, something we didn't know what it was, and then this uh, is probably ear like, testing for, for his M shop. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, well, it's an annual hearing yeah, test. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, it just yeah, I, I said, said that everybody. to him. I said it probably yeah, came you know to Jason. They put Jason Wells down as the confident. Oh, okay. I have no idea why he. <laughs> I said that to Brian. Room. I said it's probably just addressed yeah. to Jason. Well, it's, it's, not, program it's, program it's not cheap, but it's it's done. Yep. It's right. in compliance. Right. And, and, and the there's really no baseline. All of us, like, there's no precedence behind it. It's the baseline when they started testing four years ago, maybe. Yeah, so just just so <laughs> if you're here and go to some <laughs> <end. laughs> well, I think the real purpose is from a from a mind safety perspective yeah. is that that mine safety has said, if you damage or hurt your employees, you're liable. Right. So to impress that upon the employer, they say, and we're gonna take a baseline and watch your employees hearing. Right. So don't expose them to damage. Cause that has to be certain, you can't be over a certain decibel or something, right? No, there, something there's, like that. there is nothing there. Well, they go by your base, the first year that that's your baseline. Right. So and the year after that, if you lose hearing, Right. But, they, but there's no track on Ryan running his fire truck. With I was going to say, side, and side by no, side. No, I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying, but there's also the employee safety piece. So, yes. for example, right. Ryan loses his hearing totally. Yes. 
there's an investigation by OSHA or MSHA, we go through our procedures, our noise risk to the employees, and they check all that stuff out and find out that the machine is you know, running that he worked on was fine. So it's something and else. And it was something else, yeah. Gotcha, okay. So that's why it's more of an alert system than a cause effect liability. It's some, something to give somebody a job. Right, <laughs> and there's that. <laughs> Like sure Jobs all over the place on Amsha, yeah. <laughs> yeah for right. Okay, so we need, okay. We need okay. to vote on the warrants. Yes, yeah, yeah, I make a motion to approve the warrants. A second. All right. Discussion? Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed with the standing? There. No. Now. But was it was this an item? Was this something that I handed out to us? Or was this yes. Yeah, so just information. Yeah, I, I didn't uh, read it. Cool. That, that was mentioned at the last meeting yeah. when we were talking about Green River and how the that road is impacted by the state park. And that report was out there. I just didn't give you a copy. Oh, okay. Okay. Anything above Howard Menashe is all the state. Yeah. Can't. So yeah. that was from regional planning report that you didn't okay. have before. There's a little so pull up there. We go up yeah. there and plow that right there and then let the state take care of the rest of it. Water, portion of water and light goes up there and checks there. I don't even know if they go up there anymore, do they? Yeah, uh, and since that turbo ain't working, right? Up there? They're, they're required to do weekly dam inspections, but the equipment's not just a little bit of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you pull ice fish up here. But that's a state. No. It is. I know. <laughs> okay, do we, are we getting borings done? If people do when they were ice fishing, you need to go into the session. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I made a motion to go into. Oh, I forgot to mention I could do that real quick. Uh, Brian just made a, a reminder that I needed to get your opinion on a uh, permit fee. So when somebody uses the right of way, we have two fees. We have a uh, use permit, which is just using the right of way for something, which is $50. And then we have a construction or work permit when they're digging in the road or when they're putting a new driveway in or a new road, and that's $165. So Judkins, apparently, I haven't confirmed this with them, but the highway crew seems to think it's the Judkins maple sap line that runs across Garfield Road at some height. And that's a use of the right-of-way that should be, doesn't involve construction. So I don't think it's the 165 unless you want to charge that. But it should be a $50, you know, the use fee is $50 to use the right-of-way. Oh. I will pay the fee. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll help you. I'll, I'll chip in. I'll I'll pay, the fees we'll for pay the fee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the other the other option. This is this is another option. They can get a permit. Like utilities get permits, and the policy for utilities that there's no fee for utilities. So in Sapline would be a utility. No, it's sort a private of. use of the right of way, so it gets it's, into this license. Agriculture. Right. Yeah, it's an agriculture it's exemption, agriculture. Yeah. but they still get a permit to register the height and where things well, are. And all I can pretty much spell that one out for you. That the permit ain't gonna happen <laughs> for everybody. For well, apparently it ain't gonna happen there because I know, but why? Why? Why not? Well, I just telling you that I was. I know, but who do I? Who do I well, say? But they do it with no fee. Yeah, they should register and any use of yeah, the town so right away should be there. registered and approved by the town. Well, Brian, you were there talking to so you heard. I yeah, they wouldn't, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know, but I don't know what to do now with anybody else that wants to use the right away. Right. Yeah. Why are they so different right. from everybody well, else? Well, it's, this is, it is not ag right. it's agriculture and. Big deal. I'm not, I'm not getting into that one. I'm getting that. I don't, just I, don't, her, I don't get it. Let them I, don't, get the file. I don't understand what the apprehension is. If I'm telling every other 3,000 people in this town Thank that you. they need 1111 permit to use the right of way, and you're saying that Judkins do not? That is not right. And I'll put that on record. No, I say that. What, where are we going with that? Exactly. Where, what would you do with the next family that says we want to use the right of way for any particular use? Would you say, um, sorry, you're not a Judkins clan? Right. What, so, you, how do you, so you're exempt? How do you administer yeah. that? I, I agree. I agree. 
if if it's no cost, but, uh, you know, there's no damage because yeah. even the hundred sixty five. Yeah, the cost is fine. Even yeah. the hundred sixty five dollars digging in the road, it doesn't cover that. That like that eleven eleven. I would almost like to see that go up as a reservation fee. I'd like to see part of our eleven elevens have a reservation, like with the Wallace property, for example. I'd like to see a fifteen hundred dollar holding fee. That if we have to pull in our own gravel to cap that road, then we have a holding fee on we, that we can, we can go ahead and do it without chasing the rest. Oh, okay. okay. You know, where, where, where a sap line over like the road. It's like a deposit fee. Okay. A sap line over the road is We just want to make sure it's high enough. Yes. Is all the only yeah, condition. It is high enough. enough. It's yeah. not a big deal. We don't measure it. So it's, I know it's high enough. The other one that was running on the, on the other road was not high enough, and they took it down the night that I went up there. Yeah, that's good. They took it down on the Zach Wood Road. Yeah. But all it would take is, like you said, just a simple... I don't know of anybody that's gotten an exemption from 1111 in 11 years. So if that's something new, we need to talk about that. Well, it's a significant issue. I don't, it doesn't matter who it is, but it, we have to administer that day to day, Mark and I. If Mark sees something happen in his 50 feet, um, we process a permit. It's that, it's really a simple process. I don't, I don't know if the, the fee exemption is totally up to you guys. Right. Yeah. The, but the, the fact of the permit is what we're, we've been told you guys have adopted state law is right there with you. There's nothing unusual in there. That, you know, that says exempt from fill out the permit and there's... take it up to you. <laughs> I'm not. I will. You do it then. What's going to happen if you vote? Right. I just don't want to get into it. I just. What's the board's decision to I know either exactly. exempt it or get right. a permit? I think, I... I All think again doing, for agriculture, we're not, it's yeah. fine to exempt fees. Yes, absolutely. Yes. absolutely, I don't have any problem with that at all. Yeah, but neither. they need the permit, and if there are issues with them, you know, being consumer friendly, customer friendly, give the here. Chastity said she'll give her the permit, take it up, and give it to them. Say here it is, sign it, yeah, bring it back. It's really not a big right. deal. I don't yeah. know, but it's going to set the height that Mark wants, which is sixteen feet from top of surface. Right. And that when they come down on that sap line, they're outside the right of way. They're not running it into the right of way, right. unless it's a bulk tank or something they want to dump into, or something like that. A lot of people put a bulk tank at the edge of the road, and then they get it from there. Yeah. If they want to, if, if they want to run sap lines across the road in fifteen different spots, they should be talking to the town first before they do that. I don't. I really don't understand that exemption at all. I don't care what the history is. But if I'm telling everybody else they need one, right. I don't know what the exemption is from a permit. I've never seen it in your own policies or state law. So right. early well, we're percent. It's Again, if we're exempting the cost, let's just fucking fill it out. Sorry, excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> Move on. Let's go. Chance to fill it right. I start work at four tomorrow. Let's go. <laughs> if they deny the, if they deny filling it out, we'll go from there. That's right. Okay. We'll do the normal process and exactly. waive the fee. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Yes, okay. agricultural and normal. as a standard. Right. Yep. Got it. As a standard, yeah. Yeah. Fine. I just need to yep. make it. That's fine. We can apply that to everybody then. Yep. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Now what? Now we have to go into executive session. Yeah. That's the next yes. thing on there. I think we need to very quickly, though. Like, I, we can really fine tune this question from the from the town attorney. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. Town attorney. So that means I'm going to end the meeting. Okay. Good night. Thank you all for your time and for your. Uh, thank you.